Welcome to Grizzlies Football on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. We are here in Bastrop at Memorial Stadium to see the Glen Grizzlies take on the Cedar Creek Eagles. Alex Paydell alongside EJ Sanchez, Randy Fry behind the scenes doing the Q&A work for us in on today's game, week six, EJ, we're already at that point. We're almost halfway through the season. Week six starts the second half. Uh, the Grizzlies coming off a very impressive win last week. They've won three in a row in that span. They're averaging 43 points a game. Looking for another one here tonight. There's going to be a tough matchup as they're going to take on the Cedar Creek Eagles. Eagles lost last week uh, in, a, in a tough fashion. So much so with the scheduling, Coach Shanefeld actually took a lot of the team and some of the coaches to see that game to get a little first-hand scouting report because that was the benefit of playing early on Thursday. They had the Friday off. They can check out the game. They had the extra day of rest. So they used it wisely. They scouted them out, and he thought they played really well. They can really throw the football here. So uh, we got a big game going on today. we got a lot going on as well. we got Nate Hatter joining us, Noah Holmes, Coach Shane Field as well. All the goodies coming up on the KB Dream Finder Holmes pregame show. EJ Sanchez, we're here the halfway mark. Yeah, it's really exciting, and then you preview the schedule after you see the first couple of games, and you see this week and next week. Next week, of course, going against the Eastview Patriots, but these are this is the season right here. Obviously, you get the big win, you open it up with Elgin, but then you see that Cedar Creek and Eastview are going to be the two teams they're going to have to fight with to try to win this district because, obviously, you're there every, every week at practice. This team isn't content with making it into the playoffs. They want to send a statement, and they want to win this district, and they're going to have to go through these two teams, and especially this team tonight if they're going to want to get there. They started off district play really well. Two big wins, 62 points against Elgin on the road. Last week, a home game against the Pflugerville Weiss Wolves, 36-6. to So they're on top of the district, tied for the lead. They're 2-0. and uh, This is a big game, and as you said, it's tough not to look for us to see a game next week against Eastview. Got to take care of business tonight. But let's recap last week's game. Again, 36-6. to uh, the Grizzlies scored 14 points in the first quarter, 14 points in the second quarter. They went in a halftime up 28 to uh, nothing. Then they got a safety, gave up a pick six, and they ended up winning that one 36 to 6. For the Grizzlies, they got 15 first down. Uh, when I spoke to Coach Shanefeld, I. You know, we were a little frustrated last week because we thought they stalled on a lot of offensive drives. We thought they could have put a lot more points aboard. We were spoiled to see what they did against Elgin, and we thought they'd be able to do the same thing. Uh, but he mentioned, hey, they had a good defensive front, and they kept us in check a lot, and they're a lot better than that score uh, showed. Yeah, I mean, the only thing about Weiss was that they stepped on their feet a lot of the time. They had some playmakers. They had uh, Ism, who pro broke a couple of runs for them, and they... Scored. They shot themselves in the foot a couple of times on those offensive drives. But that defense, you have to give, obviously, you have to give the Glenn defense credit. They did do their job. But, I mean, I said it during last week's broadcast as well. When you get up that high, you want to be able to put your foot on the gas and not let up. And, obviously, we were spoiled a little bit because it did seem like they let up. Now, granted, they did put in some uh, second stringers and third stringers to try to escape that game with no major injuries. But, at the same time, you do want to be able to do that. Obviously, not something that's very likely tonight with a really tough Cedar Creek squad that they're going to be going up against. Yeah. As usual, they were able to spread the ball. Seven different guys got ball, uh, carried the ball last week. Seven different guys caught passes last week. Again, uh, some of the highlights we saw Lamont Slade get going later in the game. He was big on that bet that, that, uh, that last drive before the half. He had those three big rushes. He had the big 27-yard touchdown as well. So he ran 12 carries, 76 yards uh, with the touchdown. Clay Upton, the senior, and getting some time in. I co spoke to Coach Shanefield. He said, hey, he's been banged up. Uh, he was finally able to get into a game, and they were happy to use him. Corin Thompson actually left the game early last week with a sore neck. Still questionable if he'll play today, but great as always. They always seem to have another guy to come off the bench and step in and score a touchdown. So I was joking with him. I said, well, we've seen Nichols. Uh, we've seen Upton, so when are we going to see, see Stubblefield? And he said, sooner than later, we'll mm -hmm. see him. So uh, let's take a listen to what Coach Schoenfield had to say about the win last week against Weiss. All right, as always, we're joined by Coach Schoenfeld with us here on the KMAX Sports pregame show. Coach, week six, you're coming off a three-game winning streak. I know you got to be feeling good about that. Uh, recap what you thought of the Weiss game for us. Well, it's always good to get, get away with a win, uh, a district win. Actually, very impressed with them and how they played and continue to play hard. Um, they're very good defensively, still finding their way offensively, um, and that's not unusual uh, when you develop a program for your defense to uh, be a little bit ahead of the offense. But uh, it was good to get get a win over Weiss because uh, I think a lot of people are going to get wins against Weiss this year that might not in the future because they got a lot of guys that can play. So. Uh, 
you know, I was proud of our kids finishing the game. Um, some of our reserves getting in and really doing a great job. Uh, and that's always a, a good thing we can get um, everybody contributing. So when we saw it's 36 to 6, defense pitched a shutout. They got the, uh, the pick six, tough play on the front line. But it seemed to me there were times where they were getting a lot of pressure and they were getting to Drew, putting him on the run a lot. I thought their defense did play a lot better than what the score uh, was indicative of. What did you no, think about no it? No doubt. Um, absolutely. They have as good a defensive front as we've seen all year, uh, both size and mobility. Um, you know, 58, the nose guard, is going to play on Saturday, someday on television. I mean, he's going to be a big time recruit next year. Um, he has all the tools, 6'4, probably about 250, and can move. I mean, <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen too many guys from a nose guard position bat a ball up in the air, tip it to themselves, grab it out of the air, and then run 20 yards for a for a touchdown, you know, that was bad execution on the call, uh, on the play, bad call by me, um, but they had been uh, getting up the field pretty well on passes, so we, we went to throw a little running back screen, and uh, on the perimeter had it set up real well, but that guy's just, he's just a mountain to try to throw the football over and made a outstanding play, um, so yeah, those guys um, are every every bit of everything we, we wanted to see on the other side of the ball, sure. and uh, I predict that uh, they're, they're winless right now. They're struggling. But I predict they're going to win a football game before the year's over. And I told Coach Altman that, uh, you know, that some, they're going to beat somebody. So that was Coach Schoenfeld, uh, Shanefield actually showing a lot of love to the Weiss uh, Wolves. Again, as you mentioned, they, they were a lot tougher. They showed a lot of fight. And as you mentioned, he's a great point. It's just stepped on their foot a lot of times. We saw a lot of penalties in that game for them. Uh, you know, a lot of just your drop passes and balls that were short. Uh, just, just some, just some tough situations for them. A new team, and, and this was, you know, if we, if you got the Vite Media uh, uh, guidebook that was at uh, HEB, I was able to pick it up. You know, when this district came out. They had Weiss, Cedar Creek, and Glen bottom of the barrel, and yeah. right now Glen leading the district right now, two and zero. They're tied for the lead there, uh, but they thought it was kind of going to be like that Flugerville Weiss team. Excuse me, uh, that they were going to struggle a little bit, try to find their identity, but. Uh, as we talked to some of these players, and you'll hear from Noah Holmes and Nate Hatter, uh, they talked about their experience. They're actually called the OGs of the program, <laughs> the original Grizzlies. They came in early on, transferred from Rouse, uh, been there from sophomore, junior, and now senior year. So they've been here. They've been working for three years, and uh, it, it's shown how good they've played. Yeah, I mean, if you were to come watch this team and you had never heard of them before, you would think that this team – have been playing together for a long time, with this mm -hmm. only being their second year they're together, and the first year they're being able to do it in a district. That's why it's just been really impressive to watch the team. And me and you have talked off the air about it, that even us, we had some questions about <laughs> how they would do in their first year. Yeah. But, I mean, they've, they've shown it. They have uh, playmakers all around the board on both sides of the ball. And this team has really shown why they deserve to be in a district and why they're contending for a district title in their first year. And I think it just comes to depth, right? If I if I look at if we look at the uh, Cedar Creek Ross, they have about 33 guys in their team. And you flip over the side, you look at the Glen Ross, they got 55 guys. The depth on offense, as again, you can bring in Nichols, Stubblefield. They brought in Upton off the bench. That's three different backs. They got a bunch of receivers they can throw the ball to. Defensively, they lost. Uh, they lost Brandon Spires. They lost another player as well. They had to bring up two kids from JV. Uh, Cody Bagwell, who's played great, had a big interception to seal it against Elgin. They were targeting him a lot in that early on, and he bounced back, finished the game strong, had a big tackle last week. I don't know if you remember that play where he was being held on the run. He was able to break that and bring the tackle. Then Dom Sullivan, again, getting that call coming up and, and, and playing well. Uh, Coach Schoenfeld spoke about those two guys and what they brought to the table and uh, how it's always just next man up. So we, we were talking earlier, uh, Cody Bagwell comes off into the starting lineup. Now Dom Sullivan comes in the lineup. Talk, talk to me about that next man up mentality. You know, you kind of have it. Every football team has to have it to be just functional uh, because there's always going to be things that uh, cause uh, players to, to miss some reps, either practice or, or game. It's just the nature of the, of the beast. And, uh, you know, Dom came up from our JV uh, and really, what's that phone call like? Or what's that conversation like? Um, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, you know, from the coach's standpoint. Um, Only coming up, you're coming, coming up to start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and in fact, I remember the text a couple of weeks back. I texted. Him. It probably was after I want to say the McCallum game. It was either McNeil or McCallum game. I can't 
I don't quite exactly that. remember, but uh, I think it was McNeil because uh, of their phenomenal Division One receivers. And uh, you know, Dom Dom had been playing a lot of offense for us as a, on the freshman level last year, and then on the JV level because he's an impact player in our in our slot running back position. Um, and gotten some time at corner, but we honestly knew that if we needed Dom to play corner, he was going to be able to play corner. Um, so I think it was after the McNeil game, I texted him really late, and I said, uh, be here tomorrow morning, meaning Saturday morning at 9 for film. And uh, he said, yes, sir. And uh, I said, and understand we're not moving you up to ride the bench. Uh, you go out this week and compete for a starting job. And, uh, you know, we've developed uh, getting a little healthy and bringing Dom up and getting Cody healthy again. Um, developed a pretty good little three-man rotation there at corner. Um, and we really didn't have that early in the year. And um, it, it showed. But, uh, man, it's a those guys have done a great job the last two weeks, you know, getting, getting picks and, and doing a better job coverage-wise. So that's, again, Coach Shanefeld talking about the importance. It seems like every day, every game that we have, EJ, there's always a new guy stepping up. We've seen Lamont Slade take the reins of this uh, this running back committee. And even though Julian Morris and Corn Thompson are there, uh, Slade's the guy getting a touchdown. He's got seven, which is uh, third in the district right now for touchdowns. Uh, we see one week it can be Jarvis Henderson with a bunch of catches. We saw Nate Hatter get involved with two catches uh, last week. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back, see what's going on around the district, talk to Nate Hatter and Noah Holmes and get you ready. We're about 12 minutes away from kickoff here week six cedar creek eagles against your grizzlies here on the kmax sports fight media network this is kevin mcadams you know from the mcadams company creative we love to make commercials let us make yours yep that's me while my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful i've been given to understand that every once in a while y'all might want to hear somebody different so i went out and recruited some guys so first i'd like to introduce blake good afternoon my name's blake herrera and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane this guy over here this is steve hi i'm steve true story when i was in college girls used to love it when i read their textbooks to them and i'm kevin and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491 or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with the McAdams Company Creative. No longer working alone. I love to make commercials. Let me make yours. The KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right, three KMAX Sports campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Jace Andrews, Blake Herrera, and EJ Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to enter and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us, info at kmaxsports.com. The KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, Al Cepeda, EJ Sanchez, Randy Fry with you on the Dreamfinder Homes pregame show. Again, let's talk about Dreamfinder Homes. Now building new homes in the mid-200s. This community is the perfect location for growing close with nature, living a healthy lifestyle, and creating memories with friends and family. Conveniently located along Austin's North Growth Corridor, Orchard Ridge has easy access to the Leander Independent School District and many of Austin's entertainment hubs. Come check out this perfect place to call home today. Brought to you by the Dreamfinder Homes. Homes built to fit your lifestyle. Visit DreamfinderHomes.com slash Orchard Ridge for more information. As we mentioned, Glenn tied with Bastrop, who got the win last week, the one-point win over Cedar Creek. They're tied right now on top of the Division 2-0. Uh, Elgin's 
looking to, to kind of make some noise as they won yesterday 23 to nothing. Uh, Jacob Harkins got hurt. They brought in Ty McFarlane in the game. I saw that in the statement today, and he, he showed up big. Uh, 70 yards of offense for Weiss yesterday. So that Elgin defense, ever since that wake-up call from Glenn, uh, they've bared down. They've won two in a row. So Glenn, 2-0. and Bastrop, 2-0. and Elgin, 2-1. and Cedar Creek, 1-1. and Brenham, 1-1. One and one. Eastview, 1-1. One and one. Uh, Weiss, 0-3. Oh Marble Falls, 0-2. Oh As you mentioned, uh, next week the game against Eastview. So that's going to be a big game uh, to see that big quarterback, what he's doing. He's leading the district in a lot of stuff as well. So uh, we got a chance to talk to Nate Hatter. Uh, coming off the schneid, I guess you would call it again. He <laughs> had one target in that big win against Elgin, but he did his job. He was blocking, doing everything a big tight end is supposed to do. But as they began on the board last week with two big touchdowns. They found him early in the game, and he did a great job. We spoke to Nate this week. Talk to me about the Elgin game. I was giving Coach Shanefield a hard time. Uh, you got that one target, nothing going, then you open the game with a big play, and you end the day with two touchdowns. So talk to me about the differences between blocking all day, opening holes for the running game, and then coming out in the next week, two big touchdowns for the team. Uh, you know, I um, listened to the radio show that you guys held with Coach Shanefield. The way he described it was really accurate. Mm -hmm. um, my position on the team is really to just aid people. And whether that's in aiding the block so we can get a good run play or that's either aiding the team through a pass catch, um, it's whatever I can do to assist. So whether my contribution to the team sure. is blocking and doing a good job getting the hole open or it's making a play down the field pass, I'm, con I'm absolutely I'm content with either one. It is nice catching the ball, I'll be totally <laughs> honest. It's a good feeling yeah. getting a good pass. And um, Drew did a great job on our game against Weiss. He led me well, and um, I think it's one of some of the best passes I've got from him this season. Talk to me about the leadership of Drew McGuire. He's able to spread the ball to everybody, pretty good on the run as well. Talk to me what it's like to be in that huddle with Drew every week. You know, him being a junior with a um, senior heavy team, mm -hmm. you know, um, he's doing a fantastic job. Not only with leading us through example um, on the field, but also through being more vocal this year. That's been a, um, he's been evolving over time, getting more vocal and being more, um, talking to people, getting connections made, yep. um, talking to receivers, um, talking about passes, how we can uh, assist, how we assist him more mm -hmm. on getting the ball to, to us easier. So um, he's doing a great job in every area right now. Talk to me about all these running backs you have. You have Thompson, you have Morris, you have Slade, and we've seen a little bit of Upton and Nichols as well. So uh, talk to me about the different run styles, not each of them, but just how it affects the way you play your game. Honestly, I know I am um, – confident each running back equally mm -hmm. they've all shown their worth and shown how much of an athlete they are so whenever i go to block i don't even need to look back and see who i'm blocking <laughs> for i know they're gonna get the job done and they're gonna put all their effort into it which is tremendous for my team so they mentioned to me uh last year you were playing linebacker position hitting guys what's the difference between being a linebacker or a tight end or is it almost the same thing you're yeah. just catching the ball i think it's honestly they're very different there's a uh -huh. big contrast um a linebacker uh, I was much more focused on stopping the play, you know, doing all I can to be a, um, a wall, right? Uh -huh. Whether that's holding the edge to keep the play from going outside or that's dropping back for a pass, I was really focused on um, what I can do to be as destructive as I could be. Do you bring some of that experience as a linebacker knowing what the defense is going to show you on certain plays and kind of understanding mm -hmm. uh, what you're seeing? Absolutely. When I, as a tight end, I'll be blocking a lot online. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know the blitzes. Yeah. And maybe each team has a different you know, set of blitzes, and they're going to perform it differently. But the uh, principles are the same. People are going to be switching, and as a, like, being a linebacker, mm -hmm. I can remember some of the things I've done. And as I see that happen in the game, I can just remember that for the next place. Last question. You guys have won three in a row. The mood's got to be going great. What's the attitude going into this week to kind of keep that momentum up, start stacking a bunch of wins in district? Uh, we're excited, you know. Three game winning streaks, awesome. And yep. that's exactly what we need right now going further in the district. We, um, as a team, we've been working for this for a few years, mm -hmm. and our goals are as high as they could be right now. So that's super exciting for us and, um, and for the coaching staff. We're all really just pushing for victory after the next. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. That's Nate Hatter joining us with us on the pregame show. Good luck, Nate. Thank you, sir. 
All right, so that was Nate Hatter. Again, great young man. Enjoy talking to him. Again, all these guys that we talk to every week, they're just really good kids, uh, really understand football, and they're just so well coaches. Not just Coach Shane Phil, it's all the other coaches uh, that are involved. I mean, we talk about Shane Phil a lot. You know, you have the uh, defensive coordinator, Brandon Kroskoff, special teams coordinator, Taylor Logsdon, uh, full band tight end coach, Michael Becca, Darren Childs, uh, Zach Darling, Alberto Guzman, Clint Horman that we spoke about, Ivan Shelna with the line, lineman Dexter Reed works with the corners, Dylan Tomas, uh, Chris Whitehead, and Jeff Wilkerson. Again, and of course, Molly Kidd and Jason Allen, those are trainers that are keeping everybody going every week. Yeah. So uh, we're probably not going to get a chance to talk to Nate, uh, Noah Holmes now. We'll talk to him in the halftime break. Uh, we're about three minutes away, uh, getting ready for the kickoff and the uh, coins. Uh, coin flip, excuse me, <laughs> as we're waiting there, Glenn, in their white uniforms, road uniforms, Cedar Creek in their black and navy. So we're going to pause for our national anthem, it seems like, and uh, we'll be back with our keys to the game. So we're not going to have our national anthem. So uh, the keys to the game for me, again, we're, we've been talking a lot about uh, Alfred Collins, big guy probably gonna go to university of texas a hometown kid to get a kid from this school i mean he's he's huge <laughs> six five two seventy as i mentioned a size 19 shoe uh, he's getting to the quarterbacks he's wreaking havoc. he's got five sacks on the season uh, i think we're going to see a lot of nate hatter in the blocking game today and those guys up front you know we're going to see jacob Tran, rudy martinez nick maddox slade jokas and trent brown those guys are going to be tested uh lamont you're probably gonna see a lot of julian morris too as well maybe split back to the left of Drew McGuire just to help out because Drew's a big boy too so they're going to need as many hands on deck to kind of block this guy but again it's not just him they have uh, and now. Reggie Smith, Jacob Turner, Kate Edwards so a lot of guys going on it's going to be one of the toughest defensive matchups that they've seen all year and their two losses it really wasn't the defense that held that, that was giving them a tough time it was just their defense wasn't uh, in sync yet so now we are ready for the national anthem That was our national anthem as we were getting ready for kickoff. Egypt, what are your keys to today's game? Well, my one key to the game would have to be in the defense because this Cedar Creek offense is very similar to Glenn's. I mean, they average very close to the total number of yards a game, and they're almost identical in the passing game. And when we always talk about Drew McGuire and how well he's done, the quarterback for Cedar Creek, Hunter Houston, has done a great job for them as well. Over 800 yards already, puts up about 170 a game, 
And so my key to the game is staying strong in the secondary. I mean, this is where your boy Noah Holmes is probably going to have to be a guy in the middle. Maybe he comes up with an interception today. It's going to be up to him, Townsley, Bag. Obviously, we talked about Bagwell and Sullivan coming up from JV. They're going to need to make an impact because Livingston is going to be a menace all night. He's not the biggest guy, about 5'8", 160 pounds, but he's a guy that can make people miss, especially when he gets in space. Got a 61-yard catch for the long on the season, averaging 18.4 yards uh, game, uh, catch excuse me last week three catches 81 yards the average 21 27 uh, yards a catch as well Houston does it all he's the punter he's the punt returner and he's the quarterback so I mean he's got a lot on his plate but again his his big thing is going to be to stop these boys up front for us as well they're going to be able to get a rush going yeah, especially Livingston also is the guy. He's their star guy on the offensive side of the ball, but he also has a pick on defense as well. So he's a guy that will also play both ways. So the ground game is going to be headed by Dominic Mojica, who has 450 yards on the ground, 8.3 a clip. So this is a guy that's going to pick up yardage in chunks. And Aaron Perales is, all, is the second leading rusher, but what makes him so dangerous is his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. He has 110 yards through the air and 300 on the ground. That's somebody who's really versatile and somebody who can be a menace in the secondary for the Grizzlies. So Soto is on the field. Looks like Glenn is going to be kicking off to start things off. Again, Grizzlies in uh, white jerseys, orange numbers and lettering outlined by the navy blue, gray pants with orange navy and white piping on the side. Again, that beautiful navy matt matt navy uh grizzly paw on the helmet as well so pedro soto is getting ready to kick off and we are ready for football as kick is up in the air and it's a good one it's going to be fielded at about the 15 yard line and it's brought outside cut across and townsley is there immediately to make the tackle at about the 30 yard line so a nice stop there from townsley and it was number nine on the return for the Cedar Creek Eagles. It was Col Colton Fitzhugh, a defensive back, a junior. He was there on the return, about a 16-yard return. So this defense is going to take over. And again, as you mentioned, Houston, he was actually transferred from Bastrop. He was there for two years. Now he's in his second year here leading the Cedar Creek Eagles. He's got Dominic Mojica and Aaron Perales, two big running backs for him. And from here, it looks like it is Perales. Well, the both are going to be in there. Morales to the left, Mojica to the right. Right to left on your radio. The give is to Perales, and he's met immediately in the middle by a bunch of Grizzlies. And that's going to be Brian Creel in on the stop, of course. <laughs> yeah, him and Pollock. So they might have given him a yard on the play. It's going to be important for these linebackers not to let Perales get out in space, especially by himself. But since he's so good covering out of the backfield, it's going to be something the linebackers are going to do something they haven't been comfortable doing so far this year. They'll call it second and eight. The ball's on the 32-yard, so a two-yard pickup for Perales. Shotgun snap coming, and the give is to Perales again. He's trying to break a tackle, and he's going to get maybe to the 33-yard line. So a one-yard pickup there. So this Grizzly defense holding strong. First two carries, only three yards allowed. Francis Daiku is going to be huge in this game to not let Mojica, because Mojica is a guy that really does a good job bursting through the line. It's going to be a good job by Daiku to try to keep him contained all night. Third and seven, they're trying to switch the play up. And trying to get a call from head coach John Edwards. John Edwards uh, leading this team. This is his fourth season as the head coach of Cedar Creek. So shotgun snaps two backs to the side of him. Perales to his right, Mojica to the left. And they're going to bring a receiver in motion, and that's Livingston, as you mentioned. Third and seven. Looking to throw. Throws to the sideline. Did he get in? They say, no, he didn't get in. Pushed out of bounds by Brian Creel and Isaac Armijo. So incomplete on the pass. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it was a good job by Armijo adjusting right there. They brought Livingston in motion down to the near side of the sideline. Armijo did a good job of picking him up and not allowing him to get behind the defense. Good stop right there by Armijo. Great job by the defense on first and second down, limiting it to make a third and a little bit of long third and seven, forcing them to throw, and great coverage as they push Livingston out of bounds. So Houston now will punt. Houston is averaging 34.2 yards a punt. He's got a 58-yard to his name. He's also got three inside of the 20. So he's there. He's waiting. He's taking his time. He's going to punt. And it's going to go into Grizzly territory, and it's going to roll, and it's going to be picked up by about the 24, 23-yard line. It's going to roll, and it's picked up by Kate Edwards at the 23-yard line. So a big punt there 
Uh, I would say my math is right. That's about a 44-yard punt. Yeah, clearly Coach John Edwards did his homework when he read, read Sam Martin's uh, return numbers from last week, over 50, over 50 yards in his first two returns last week until the West Wolves eventually started kicking the ball away from him. But it's going to be important for Martin to try to get going too because this defense is legit, especially when it comes to the pass rush. So Drew McGuire's a flag on the player waiting to see what's going on out there. There was, was no block in the back because there was no return. They let it roll down, so I'm wondering uh, what the call is. We're still waiting to hear back as they're bringing in the other official. They want the line judge to come up and explain what's going on. So we'll wait for the announcement right now. Uh, Drew McGuire set to take the field. 62 for 103, so he's completing 60% of his passes. Uh, as you mentioned, averaging 163 yards a game, so 815 on the season. Nine passing touchdowns, four interceptions. He's got his long of 62, which was that play to Jarvis Henderson against uh, Elgin. And he's at a 98.2 quarterback rate. So we're getting a chance right now to see this Cedar Creek defense, EJ, and you see Collins from here. Big guy in the middle right now, number 99. Again, can't mention him enough. Uh, he's coming into today's game with 43 tackles, 36 solo tackles, 13 tackles for a loss, 5 sacks, 2 forced fumbles. So, I mean, you don't really want to get in that man's way. There's a picture of him in the Statesman literally lifting up a running back from Bastrop last week. He's off the ground. He's carrying him like a baby. Yeah, I mean, this defense is legit, and it looks like that penalty was a personal foul that will go against Glenn. He did not say a number, so we don't know who it's on, but they will be pinned in their own deep in their own territory on their first drive of the day. So again, the ball was at the, the 23 yards. So it's going to end up being, it looks like, a 15-yard penalty. He's going to push Glenn back. Well, it's going to be half the distance to the goal line, actually, so they'll push them to the 12 since they were inside 25. So Glenn will take over at their own 12-yard line. It's Julian Morris, big boy, in the backfield, left to right now on your radio. First snap of the game for the Grizzlies. McGuire back to pass. He's got a little bit of time. He's throwing down the middle of the field. He's got Jarvis Henderson at the 40. Down at the 45. All the way down to the 48-yard line. A 36-yard pass on the first play of the game to Jarvis Henderson. Yeah, Jarvis Henderson, a guy that we didn't see a whole lot of last week. But he's always a guy you can rely on. It seemed You saw him in the slot. Lined up right there. Went straight across the field. And the offensive line did a good job of giving McGuire a clean puck to throw in. Big game for the Grizzlies. Absolutely. 36-yard play, and they're trying to figure out the spot. But, again, 36-yard play on first down, looking to pass. Again, that's going to be a way to stop this defense. Uh, face mask is called now against Cedar Creek, so we're going to add on even more yardage. So, Glenn pinned back in their own 15-yard line. They're able to hit on a 36-yard pass and get more yards on the penalty. Yeah, worst-case scenario, if you're the Cedar Creek uh, Cedar Creek defense, definitely not what you want, but it's important for Glenn to try to take advantage and get going early because this is the team that can sneak up and bite you. So it's Morris again to the left of McGuire. McGuire in the shotgun snap. Martin to the right. Henderson out to the left. And they're going to give it to Tom, uh, to Morris. Excuse me. He's going to run outside, get all the way to about the 31 yard line. So a big pickup there for a six yard pickup as they added the yards after the penalty. So six yard pickup for Morris. That'll bring up second down and four. Yeah, he did a good job of making, getting a little bit of yardage on something that was really well read by the Cedar Creek defense. So we'll call it a seven yard pickup. So we'll have second and three from the Eagles 30. They need the 27 yard line for a first down. No score here. Ten minutes left to go. Give us the slay. He's going to break across the 30 yard line he's going to get to the 26 so he should have enough for a first down as he does and they will move the chain so Grizzlies getting going here on this first drive yeah, it's important to try to establish a tempo offensively early and they're doing a good job so far look for Sam Martin here on the near side he is by himself in single coverage so we're seeing a little bit of everybody we've seen Slade we've seen Morris we've seen Henderson Now again, Roderick Stubblefield coming into the game. He's going to be split out wide with Sam Martin to the right side. And Slade is the runner out of the backfield. He's going to come across, met by a bunch of Grizzlies. Alfred Collins swallowed him up, but not before he gets to the 24-yard line. So a pickup of two on the play brings up second down and eight. He was dropped right there by number 45 of the Cedar Creek Eagles, and that would be Josh Garza, the junior linebacker. He is also a really good tackler on this team. 29 tackles, two tackles for a loss, and a sack for Garza, the senior linebacker. Shotgun snap, McGuire rolls out to his left. He's being chased. Nice block there. So they're going to throw, and the ball, is it caught? It looks like it was almost picked off. 
And they are going to call it a catch at the 19-yard line. Great play to fight for the ball for Jarvis Henderson for a nine-yard pickup. Yeah, we always talk about Henderson's hands, but the key play on that was the block by Trent Brown. It looked like one of the pass rushers for the Eagles broke into the backfield really early, and Brown did a good job of not holding but still sticking his ground and not letting McGuire get touched. Good play right there by the offensive line. So 43 yards so far in this game for Jarvis Henderson as he picks up the play. Give us to Slade. He's going to come across. going to get a first down. He's brought down at the 14-yard line. So a four-yard pickup and another Grizzly first down. It's their third of this drive. You really like to see the offense keep moving at this tempo all night. If you can do that, you're going to have some success against the defense that doesn't allow a lot of yards. 8.45 and counting to go. Balls on the 14-yard line of Cedar Creek. The Grizzlies trying to have a very impressive opening drive as they're driving down the field. McGuire back to pass. He's looking. He's going to throw in the middle of the field just over the hands. Uh, looks like that's Sam Martin out there. Julian Morris. Julian Morris on the incomplete pass. No, that's actually Kobe uh, Sorrell. So we don't think we're going to see much of Kobe Sorrell, the third string tight end. He's getting some work out there tonight. Number 28. Nothing really can do if you're McGuire. It's either out of bounds or into Sorrell's hands right there. And just like at least a foot. Overthrown right there by McGuire. Second down from the 14-yard line. McGuire again back to pass. He's looking. He's getting flushed out of the pocket. He's going to roll out to his right. He's looking to throw on the run. He's throwing deep in the back of the end zone. Sam Martin can't come up with it as it's a little bit out of reach. That's going to bring up third down. Yeah, McGuire did everything right except completing the pass. He rolled out. He had a lot of time to move, and Martin beat his man right here near the near pylon in the corner of the end zone. Just wasn't able to make a play. Looking at the seventh play of the drive. Again, the Grizzlies start at their own 12-yard line. Now they're at the Cedar Creek 14-yard line. So you hate to see this drive stall here. A very important third down and 10 as they need the Cedar Creek 4-yard line for a first down. Morrison on the backfield. Out wide to the right of McGuire. Thompson in motion. And they disconnect and the throw is over the middle of the field. Incomplete. Intended for Nate Hatter. You had Henderson coming in motion. He kind of bumped into Slade. I was surprised they didn't call it legal procedure on that play. So it's going to bring up fourth down. And yeah. it looks like they are going to bring on the kicking unit. So Soto's going to come out and try to put the Grizzlies on the board. He missed the only field goal he had last week. Uh, and he's going to try to put them on the board early. Yeah, Cedar Creek made Drew McGuire pay for that one. Reggie Smith came out and just laid a good lick on McGuire at the tail end of that play. And it's unfortunate to see this stall. We're hoping Soto right here can try to put them ahead early. A uh, fake kick now. Martin is back to pass. He's looking across the field. He's got a wide open Ramon Slade for the touchdown. The fake kick. And Sam Martin pulls it off and throws a deep touchdown. What a play. Going for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal. You always talk about him emulating Odell Beckham Jr. And obviously we saw Odell <laughs> made the touch, threw a touchdown pass last week. Same thing right there. You see Coach Shanefield playing to win early. There's 8-11 left to go in the first quarter. But you see he's not backing down from this game because he knows that points can be at a premium. Great play right there by the Eagles. Good execution and good call right there so by Coach So now Shanefield. they'll kick the ball. Instead, we got offsides on the play, and they're not going to kick it. And you know what, EJ? I'm looking really closely. I think that was Lee Pollock on the touchdown. Because there was, there was no, it wasn't 21 out there on the play. Because Julian Morris is not going to be in on field goal coverage. So we'll get the official stat upstairs. But I think that was Lee Pollock on the touchdown. Nonetheless, Showing he can do it all. Grizzlies 8-11 as they went for it on fourth down. We had offsides on the extra points. It's going to move them a little bit closer. As Sam Martin is waiting to hold for Pedro Soto. Kick is up. And it is good. So the Grizzlies with 8-11 left to go in the first quarter take a 7-0 lead. A very impressive drive. Eight plays, 82 yards, seven points for the Grizzlies. We'll be back on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. Fight Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. From West Texas all the way in the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. This is the KMAX Sports Network, bringing your teams to you. This is the KMAX Sports Network. 
Out there to EJ Sanchez. You're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAC Sports Bite Media Network. 8-11 to go. Grizzlies 7-0 on the 14-yard touchdown pass by the field goal holder, Sam Martin, on the play. We're still waiting confirmation. I thought it was Lee Pollock. Might have been Kobe Sorrell, but we'll get that for you as the kick is launched and returned from the 9-yard line. And it's brought out to across the 30. They're going to mark the runner down at the, excuse me, the run at the 26-yard line. So a 17-yard pickup. And Cedar Creek getting ready to start their second drive of the game. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Edwards adjusts his game plan. He tried to get Perales going on the ground. We'll try to see if he'll maybe look through him in the passing attack. We've seen that Hunter Houston th can do some damage with his arm. 18 yards of completion. So Absolutely. that shows that he can pick up yards in good chunks. So we'll try to see if he'll try to use Perales or go to their playmaker, Javon Livingston. Last week, Houston was 12 for 28 for 221 yards, a touchdown. He also had eight carries for four yards and a touchdown. So trying to get them going here on their second drive. It'll be a shotgun snap from the Eagles' 26-yard line. To give it to Perales, he's going to run across the middle. And he's met by a bunch of Glenn Grizzlies looking to see who led the way. And it looked like that might have been Chase Dowden in on the initial tackle. You know, we've seen three carries for Perales already. We're going to start to look for Dominique Mojica, number 21. We'll try to see how many carries they get him because he's usually their bell cow back. Three yards on the pickup to Perales. Again, both backs in the backfield right now. As we're waiting to see what's going on. So second and seven from the Eagles' 29-yard line. Houston back to pass. He's got a lot of pressure. And he's going to throw on the run. He's going to throw it away out of bounds. It's going to be third down. So the Eagles got pressure. Lee Pollock and Matthew uh, Hester in on the pressure. Yeah, also Noah Holmes just broke through immediately on that last play. Did a good job of coverage on the back end, though, but it was a good job forcing pressure right there and not giving Houston a clean pocket to throw in. Third and seven. 7.22 left to go in the first quarter. Grizzlies lead it 7 to nothing. Ball is on the Eagles' 29-yard line. They need the Grizzly 36 to keep this drive going. Got Isaac Armijo in on defense for the Grizzlies as well as Cody Bagwell. So here's the third and seven play. Houston rolls out to his left. He's going to try to run. He's going to throw on the run. He's going to hit Perales there, and he's going to get out of bounds. He's going to have the first down. They're going to mark him at the 40-yard line, so an 11-yard pickup on the swing play to Perales. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want to see from there. For If you're on the Cedar Creek side, you want to see Perales there. And that's when a back like that can be so dangerous on some of those bootlegs when he's able to roll out. Makes it harder for the defense. And all Perales tonight, three carries and a catch. Uh, I'm trying to see if I see Mojica out there. Maybe he's not out there today. Maybe try to see if we can see him on the bench. That's probably the best way to look for him. It looks like Mojica is in front. Is that him? Yeah. Yeah. So again, Perales again trying to run off tackle up the middle. He's not going to get much there. He's still fighting for extra yardage. They're going to mark him at the 42-yard line. So a two-yard pickup for Perales. So it looks like that one right there might have been Mojica. Mojica, Mojica number 21. Mojica, okay. So two-yard pickup for Mojica. And that's usually the two-headed monster for them on the ground. But it looks like the defense so far for Glenn is not really getting confused too much with what they're trying to do. As you mentioned, Mojica came into today's games with 50 carries, Perales 41, so a true split, but enough uh, to spread the wealth. As it's Perales this time to the right, and Mojica to the left. Second and eight. And Houston's rolling out, he's looking, he's got pressure, he's looking to throw, he's going to throw the ball deep. He's going to get out of bounds, he's looking for Payne Allen. It's actually looking for Ty Pruitt, excuse me, on the deep ball. That ball went out of bounds, so three and out again for the Eagles. But looks like Houston's going to stay on the field. It's looking to possibly get a play going. Yeah, Ty Pruitt, the sophomore right there. And what Glenn's doing a good job right here is Houston has not had a comfortable throw yet. Every single time he has at least one guy in his face or trying to evade somebody. And that's the... That's the risk you live with when you want to do a lot of rollout plays and a lot of motion. You're always going to have somebody out there instead of just sitting in the pocket. So Houston trying to get things going for the Grizzlies. Third and eight. Receivers in motion. Shotgun snap back to pass. Rolling. Houston got a lot of pressure again. He's got nowhere to go. Is he being chased down? Trying to get a ahead. And he finally dumps it off out of bounds. A lot of running around for Houston on that play with nowhere to go. And now we'll have fourth down as I uh, messed up that down last time. So we'll have fourth and eight 
on the incompletion. Yeah, you got to be really happy if you're Coach Shanefield with what this defense has done so far. Not really giving Houston a clean pocket to throw in. You're containing the running game, which has been so good for them all season long. And they're doing a good job. Something I found interesting, though, is Alfred Collins on second down came in, and he was on the offensive line. So maybe trying to use a little bit of his size on the offensive side of the ball to try to create some holes for the running backs. Or just to contain this pressure from the Grizzlies front. So fourth and eight as Houston's looking to punt. And it's actually a different punter right now as this ball is another good punt for the Cedar Creek. It's going to roll inside the 20. They're going to mark it out of bounds at the 19-20 yard line. So another good kick for Cedar Creek. That's a 38-yard punt. And yeah, that was Nathaniel Salas, also, who also doubles as the kicker. So he was out there on that last punt. Two good punts for Cedar Creek so far. Absolutely. So the Grizzlies getting ready to pick up right where they left off on their second drive now. 6.04 left to go in the first quarter. Grizzlies lead it 7 to nothing as they march onto the field right now. That is going to be Lamont Slade and Julian Morris and Clay Upton. They're going to go three running backs in on this first drive. Trip running backs on the play. And they're faking the give. It's going to be Lamont Slade's going to bounce outside, get across the 20 to about the 20. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 24-yard line. So a four-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. That was good downfield blocking right there by Julian Morris. And Coach Shanefield calls him a fullback. He showed it right there. It made a good downfield block. Allowed him to spring loose for a couple extra yards. They're going to stay with these three running backs. Again, Slade, Morris, and Upton in. Got Nate Hatter on the left side trying to bring in some blocks. Only one wide receiver right now, and that's Sam Martin on his own to the left. So again, three running backs for the Grizzlies. Let's we'll see what they're going to do with it. And the give again is to Slade. He's going to bounce outside to left. Great hole. Get across the 30, and he's down at the 33-yard line. A nine-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. He got through that first line of defense, and he got a nice carry from there. Yeah, and if you're Lamont Slade, if you can get through that first line of defense, you he has the moves to be able to do it. You see him being able to shift through and make some linebackers miss. Show it right there. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Flags on the play. As Morris is going to get bottled up, and they're going to say he's at the 32-yard line. So maybe no gain on the play, but a flag came out as soon as the play started. So we'll wait and see what's going on over there. Jacob Turner was on the tackle for the Eagles. 17 tackles for a loss. He's also been a menace in the backfield all season long. Here's a call. It's just so interesting. You watch NFL games, and they get the call out so quick. We're waiting to see what the call. So legal substitution on the defense for Cedar Creek. So add another five yards to the play for Glenn. So the ball's going to be put now at the 37-yard line. And the Grizzlies are going to have first and five. Uh, as that run for Morris did not happen on the record. Tell that to him, though, after getting hit. They're going to stay with this three running back formation. Now it's Clay Upton going to bounce to the outside. He's going to get across almost to midfield. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 49-yard line of Glenn Territory. So a 12-yard pickup for Clay Upton. Yeah, it's great to see Upton start to get in, too. It only makes the offense so much better when now you have five guys who can carry the ball every single down and make and be successful while doing it. So Grizzlies now with a first down at their own 49-yard line. Again, three running back bunch here. Snap. Slade. Outside, across midfield, and they're going to give him midfield. They're going to give him a yard on the play, so second down and nine for the Grizzlies. Yeah, this three running back set resembles a lot of the slot T offense that we saw in week one yeah. against Liberty <laughs> Hill, where we don't know who it's going to and a lot of misdirection. So that's where Drew McGuire has to be at his A game mentally when he knows that he can be going to any guy, and those audibles can switch like that and flip the play to the other side. Again, this is the best way to neutralize this pass rush because you don't know who's going to get the ball. Shotgun again. This time it's McGuire. He's going to fake it out of everybody. He's going to dump off to Upton, who's in the flat. He's going to push through across the 45 to the 35. He's going to be pushed down at the 29-yard line. So a 21-yard pickup on the flat route to Clay Upton. That tackle was made right there by number 33, Reggie Smith. And he is the second leading tackler on this defense, the junior linebacker. And it's weird to see, it's kind of interesting to see, excuse me, how Glenn is moving, moving its offense right now with a lot of misdirection and a lot of movement instead of just going on the ground and going ground and pound like they usually do. They finally go single back now. It's going to be Morris in the back for McGuire. Again, packed to pass. He's looking deep for the end zone. It's got Sam Martin. Had him wide open, but the ball is out of bounds, not able to connect there. 
Yeah, see, it almost looked like a fade route near the near pylon. Right about the two-yard line is where Martin would have caught it, but McGuire just put too much on it, and it just drifted a couple yards out. 3.53 left to go in the first quarter. Second and 10 for the Grizzlies. They're at the Cedar Creek 30-yard line, so Grizzlies really moving the ball here. See what they do on third down. Morris is the tailback. Snap is to McGuire. He rolls out to his left. He's looking for something. He's actually going to take it himself. He's going to grow across the 30, across the 25, across the 20, down to the 15. He's going to be brought down at the 14-yard line, but there's a flag in the backfield. Most likely it's coming back. That tackle was made right there by Damian Perez. And we always talk about the offensive line, how McGuire stood upright the, most of the season. The only time that he's not is when it's by his, his own choice. He took off for a 16-yard game, but it looks like it's going to come back as they're waving everybody back. So holding on the Grizzlies, number 53, that should be Slade Jokas, the right tackle, as they were trying to put McGuire out in motion. They're doing a great job of this misdirection. They're running the ball, then they fake the pad to run, they go with the pass to Upton. Even there, they're just trying to keep the pressure uh, off of uh, of this offensive line, just not letting Alfred uh, Collins pin his ear backs and get to the quarterback. So, second and 20 after the penalty. Swing pass to Stubblefield. It's going to get inside the 40 to the 30, down to the 20 yard line. Inside the 20 yard line, Grizzlies pick up 21 yards on second and 20. Great downfield vision, vision right there by Stubblefield. His screen was meant to go on the far side, but he saw that the Eagles did a good job of reading it. He broke, he cut up field all the way backside and made something out of it. Good play right there by Stubblefield. Second and 20, they pick up 21 yards. Ball's now at the Eagles. 19-yard line, 314 left to go and counting. Grizzlies looking for more. Snap. McGuire again packed to pass. He's looking in the middle of the field, and he's got a touchdown. As that is number 20, Jarvis Henderson on the touchdown. Grizzlies 13 to nothing on the 19-yard touchdown pass. McGuire to Henderson. It's so demoralizing for a defense when they pick up a penalty. Second and 20, you give up 21. That just takes the air out of a defense. And a good job right there by McGuire staying calm. It was a good, great job right there by Henderson. It looked like it was about to be a pick, but Henderson with the good hands, as we already know, went up and made the catch. Great play right there for the Martin Grizzlies. Martin holds the kick for the extra point by Soto, and it is good. With 3:04 left to go in the first quarter, the Grizzlies lead it 14 to nothing against Cedar Creek. McGuire with that pass is now over 100 yards in the game. He's five for eight for 104 yards and a touchdown. Jarvis Henderson three catches, 62 yards and a touchdown, and Lamont Slade six carries for 24 yards. Uh, so unfortunately, since we've seen a lot of Upton and Stumblefield, I don't think uh, Corn Thompson is going to be in this game. He's probably still dealing with that neck injury from last week. Well, again, that's that next man up mentality that we talked about in the pregame show and that we've talked about all season. And that just makes this offense so much more dangerous when he returns, when you have playmakers on the ground, but then you were also forgetting about Sam Martin. And obviously we saw Jarvis, Jarvis Henderson right there. This offense is so explosive in so many ways. And when he comes back, it's going to make it so much harder for opposing defenses. As the Grizzlies, that offense still churning, as we mentioned in the last three games, averaging 42.5 points a game. They're up 14 nothing, and we're only in the first quarter. 3.04 left to go. You got Colton Fitzhugh back to receive the kick for the Cedar Creek Eagles and see if Pedro Soto can get some leg into this one. Again, Grizzlies starting off strong on the road as well as the kick from Soto is up. It's a high one as Fitzhugh is going to receive it at the 9 yard and he muffs it, balls out and it looks like Glenn's got it, they're calling for the ball it looks like Glenn's got the fumble recovery and they do what a play by the special teams, we talk about special teams with this team all the time and Fitzhugh came dashing he was all the way back at about the 5 yard and he had to run to get the ball and it bounced right off his chest it's always those safeties we hear on special teams and Noah Holmes was the one that came up with the recovery. Him and Townsley are always have their nose on every single play, even if they aren't testing them in the secondary. Big play right there for the special teams, and we talked about in the pregame show. If you can get up on a team, you want to put them away. If you can be up three scores on a district opponent like this and a district opponent to the caliber of Cedar Creek, it is absolutely huge. The offense needs to capitalize right here. They're going to take over at the Eagles 24 yard line. So McGuire, left to right on your radio, Morris with him to his left. Four wide receivers. Looks like we might have a jump as the flag is out. And 
call it delay a game on Glenn's. They're not able to get the playoff in time, so that's going to push them back five yards and delay a game. Can't have that. Yeah, especially when you have all the momentum. The last thing you want to ha make a habit of is penalties, and we saw how much that came back to haunt them earlier in the Callum game. So we got Henderson and Hatter split out to the left. Stubblefield and Martin out to the right. McGuire again out to pass. And he's looking to step up in the pocket. He's got a little bit of pressure. He's going to take off and run. Another flag is down, but he's going to get inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Should be a 10-yard pickup, but let's see what the flag is. Again, we talk about this offensive line, how it has been so good, but looks like it might be two holding penalties coming back. No audio on the <laughs> penalty, but it's going to be brought back another 10 yards, put the Grizzlies back. They start at the 24-yard line. They're going to be at the 39-yard line. They're going to be looking at second, uh, first and 25, excuse me. Hopefully they're going to try to keep that pattern. Second and 20 <laughs> last time, they might want to pick up 26 right here on this well, next play. Well, Stubblefield is out there, and they're going to go three wide to the right this time. It's going to be Hatter, Stubblefield, and Martin with Henderson on his own to the left. Morris. The split back in the backfield. Shotgun snap. Give is to Morris. He's going to shake and bake his way. He's still going. Churning. They're going to give him the 35-yard line. So a four-yard pickup for Julian Morris. Morris, usually the guy that takes them all the way down the field, and then Slade is the one that punches it in. Seems to be a different way around with Slade getting most of the carry so far, him along with Upton. So we're going to bring in Slade now into the game, as you just mentioned. Uh, Stubblefield's going to head out, so we're going to have Slade and Morris in the backfield this time. Again, second and 21, you're probably going to be going deep here, so you definitely want those two extra backers in the backfield to provide some, some coverage. But they give it to Slade, actually, and he's going to get met immediately by Collins at the 35-yard line, so no gain on the play. It's going to bring up third and 21. Yeah, it's a really unfortunate thing for a team when you have that huge momentum swing like that and a turnover, especially on special teams, and the only direction you go is backwards, and it's only by your own doing. Well, Coach Shane feels a little bit more po politically correct than I am. I always like to say, put your foot on, on someone's throat. He says, hey, close the door and lock it. You know, and they had a chance. They have a chance to do that on this drive. They can go up 21 nothing in the first quarter. Uh, so they're going to need a lot, though. Third and 21. Ball is at the Eagle 35. Shotgun snap, McGuire. Back to pass. He's surveying the field. He's got a little bit of pressure. He's going to have to throw off his back foot. He's going to throw it away out of bounds. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, smart play right there by McGuire. There's no reason to risk it already. You're winning the field position battle at this point. There's no reason to try to risk that with an interception or try to turn the ball over. Now you leave it to Soto to try to pin them inside the 10-yard line. Maybe the defense makes a play. It's going to be Derek, actually Derek Childs in on the punt. And we've seen this team have about four different punters. Everybody is, is like... Reminds me of baseball, a Ben Zobris kind of guy, just a utility player. Everybody on this team can do something. So Derek Childs is standing at the Eagle 48, and he's going to try to set up a punt. He's going to go off the side of his foot, and this is an awful punt by Childs, and this is going to put up pretty good field position for the Eagles. Looks like he was trying to go directional with it instead of just putting it back in the back of the end zone. So they are going to take over at the 30 looks like the 38 yard line so uh, <laughs> uh looks like maybe like a six yard punt for child so uh this defense is back to work they're well rested though because again we had the fumble on the kickoff return previously so they've been sitting down for a little while 122 left to go in the first quarter grizzlies leading it 14 to nothing over the eagles ounce beta ej sanchez randy fry with you friday night lights week six in this district 13 5A football game. Pruitt is in motion. They'll give it to him. He's going to get outside across midfield. And Noah Holmes, the last safety there to make the play. But I think this is one coming back with a penalty. Yeah, Pruitt, the sophomore, he's the second leading receiver on this team. And we've seen him make a couple of big plays so far. But fortunately for the Grizzlies, both of them have come back. Yeah, he hit that outside, he found the hole, and he ran across. And if Noah Holmes is not there as the last reserve, that's a long touchdown. But it gets brought back on the holding, so it's going to push them back to about the 23-yard line. They'll be looking at first and 20. So a lot of penalties so far these first couple of minutes. Other updates from around the district. Eastview is currently up on the Bastrop Bears, 14-7. to That one is that 10.55 left to go in the second quarter. And the Brenham Cubs are up 14-0 on Marble Falls. The Mustangs still without a win in district. This ball is going to be put at. Line. Be first down and for the 
to put down at the looks like, like the 28. The 28 yard line. Fix the scoreboard. So at the 28 yard line, first and 15 actually on the play. I believe it's first and 20, but we'll see how they know it is first and 15. Excuse me. 56 seconds left to go. Houston looking to pass. He's got pressure by Guyton. Dyke who's chasing him. He's throwing back across the field. No good on that one. Incomplete second down. Again, we keep talking about this pressure up front by Hester, Daiku, Guyton. Everybody else, uh, Creel got in the backfield earlier. Houston has not had a comfortable throw yet. So you have to credit this defense. They're knowing exactly what they want to do because if you give Houston time, he's definitely going to try to burn you down the field. So second and 15 for the Eagles as they're looking... And I have a very important update for you after this play. As uh, Houston is going to be back to pass. It's second down and 15. Cedar Creek needs their own 43-yard line for the first down. They bring Pruitt in motion. And Houston is going to take off and run. But Petey Cervantes is right there along with Jeff Francis Daiku to lead the stop. And no gain on the play. Uh, the update, it was a touchdown to Lee Polak on the play. As we got the official word. So Lee Polak getting things going with quarterback pressures and sacks and he catches a touchdown on that fourth down play on the fake field goal yeah you always like to hear those stories about the special teams how they came up in practice the week before we'll try to see if we can get that for you next week when you go talk to coach Shanefield nothing going on with the play clock and looks like we're going to run out of time here and this might be the last play of the first quarter if they get it off looks like they're going to let this run all the way down and they are going to let it going to run down so uh, we're going to go to the second quarter 14 nothing. your Grizzlies lead it. You're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. The KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer, we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right. Three KMAX Sports Campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved. Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX Sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Chase Andrews, Blake Herrera, and E.J. Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to intern and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information on 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us info at kmaxsports.com. KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Start of the second quarter as we've switched fields now. Alan Spader, EJ Sanchez, Randy Fry with you on this Friday night, week six in district play for your Glen Grizzlies. They lead it 14 to nothing over the Cedar Creek Eagles, who have a very important third down and 14 coming from their own 29 yard line. And shotgun snap. It's going to be to Houston. He's back to pass. He's surveying the field, looking to throw, and he's getting pressure by Cervantes. And he, Jamal Johnson is there, and they're pushing it back. And Petey Cervantes is going to bring him down at the four-yard line, a 25-yard loss on the sack. Unbelievable. Relentless effort right there by Petey Cervantes. Missed on the first time. Usually after that, you count on everybody else to come back. Cervantes right there came up with a big play when he needed it. A huge loss right there for Cedar Creek and now it's going to be up to Sam Martin to try to punch this back onto the Glen side of the ball. Great play right there by the defense. This defense showing up big tonight. And we've seen a couple safeties so far the last couple of weeks with uh, punters punting from their own end zone so we'll take a look and see how that goes as you're, there's going to be a timeout on the play. It looks like Cedar Creek's going to call a timeout and try to get things going. Uh, and you saw the play developing EJ. Peter Cervantes was getting blocked. And he fought his way off the block, but then the pressure from Johnson from the other side brought it back to Cervantes' <laughs> side, and he wrapped him up and brought him down for a 25-yard loss. Yeah, you guys know that's in the 4th of 39. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you see, 
that's just a testament to how great Coach Shaneville as the defense is playing right now. This defense is firing on all cylinders. I mean, no big plays down the middle. You have Creel and Pollock in the middle, not letting anything get through them. And then you have uh, Guyton, Daiku, and Hester up front. This defense is a well-rolled machine right now. There is not a lot of holes. I mean, you thought maybe with Spires going down that maybe that might be a hole somebody going to try to attack. But uh, as you said, uh, Sullivan's doing a great job, and him and Bagwell, both in the secondary, doing their part to try to make sure that this secondary isn't tested. And for the most part, they really haven't been. Yeah, because you see, and it all starts, you know, sometimes people think it starts with the pass rush. I'm of the believer. If your covers are, corn or are covering the receiver's tight, he's got nowhere to throw. And you've seen Houston back there. He's waiting and waiting and waiting for somebody to get open, and then he's got to start running for, <laughs> running for it there. So fourth and 39, uh, as we're going to have the punter, it is going to be what is it, uh, Nata, Nata Salas is going to be punting from the back of his own end zone. Sam Martin at the Cedar Creek 45-yard line. The ball is a short punt it's going to take a roll it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 34 yard line so the Grizzlies again with great field position they're going to take over at the Eagles 34 yard line last time they had the ball in great territory they stalled with a couple of penalties so let's see if they could take advantage here 11.08 to go in the second quarter Grizzlies leading at 14 to nothing they're about to take over on the Eagles 34 yard line I liked what you said about the politically correct with Coach Shanefield. Coach Shanefield taking the door and locking it. They need to try to do that as fast as they can right here because this offense, all it will take is one big play for them to start firing on all cylinders because this isn't the offense that we've seen Cedar Creek have for most of the season. Right to left on your radio as Drew McGuire is in the shotgun snap. He's going to give it to Julian Morris. He's going to push his way. He's going to get across. They're going to mark him at the 31-yard line, so a three-yard pickup for Julian Morris. Interesting to note that Morris hasn't been picking up yards and chunks. Usually he's the bruiser, but usually we see him spring free for at least a couple of 10-yard-plus runs by this point in the game. I haven't seen that so far, and that's something that's different that we've seen because Morris now picking up the short chunks, and Upton and Slate are the ones that are picking it up in huge chunks. Four yards, four carries, 14 yards from Morris. They'll give it to him again. He's trying to wait, take his time, and... Collins trying to break Collins' tackle, and he does. They're going to give him forward progress at the 30, so they'll give him a yard on the play. Third down and six coming up for the Grizzlies. That tackle was made right there by Jacob Turner of the Cedar Creek Eagles. He has also been a force. He has two sacks on the season with 17 tackles for a loss, but he hasn't had much of a chance to find his way in the backfield because of all the misdirection that Glenn has been doing early. I think Collins was in on it, too. I think he wrapped him up, and then, you, as you mentioned, the other guy got in there. You see Collins... Running on that nose tackle position. As McGuire is out to pass, he hits Sam Martin inside the 20-yard line. Martin is fighting, trying to break through. He's pushing all the way to the 16-yard line, a 14-yard pickup for Sam Martin. And incredible moves after the catch. And I'm going to go on the other side of the play. You have to give so much credit right now to Rudy Martinez, Jacob Trim, and Nick Maddox. I mean, I'm watching every single play. Uh, I'm watching Collins try to get off the ball. And then three are not backing down from him. Obviously, he's gotten a good couple of push pushes and shoves off the line but them three are doing a good job of making sure he can't disrupt any plays and they're doing a good job up front first down and 10 from the Eagles 17 throw again to Nate Hatter now he's going to get across to the same line of scrimmage so no gain on the play after they catch the Nate Hatter The ball's at the 22-yard line. Grizzlies need the Eagles' 12-yard line for a first down. Second down and 10, 9-15, and counting left to go in the first quarter. It will be Stubblefield, Hatter, and Martin out to the left. Henderson out to the right. McGuire back to pass. He's looking. Throws to Martin. He's going to catch it. He's going to get inside the 10. He's got one tackle to beat. He's going to keep pushing his way. He's going to get down to the 3-yard line, 2-yard line they'll give him. Moving the pile, 15-yard pickup to Sam Martin. And if you ask ne if you ask Sam Martin next week, he's going to say he's not a huge fan of Josh Garza right now because Josh Garza didn't just nick the bottom of his shoe right there. Martin strolls right in for the touchdown. So a good play right there by Garza. And Martin is going to roll off of the field. So first and goal for the Grizzlies at the two-yard line. Got Slade and Morris in the backfield and Upton. So we're going with that three running back set again. Snap. Upton pushing his way off tackle in the end zone for a touchdown. Clay Upton with his second touchdown of the season. First touchdown of the game. Grizzlies lead at 20 to nothing with 8.38 left to go in the second quarter. 
offense now fire on all cylinders. We saw the last time they had good field position, got a little comfortable, the drive stalled. Now you see that they're learning from that, and that little three back formation that they've been going on has been has been huge so far, especially on the defensive side for Cedar Creek. They don't know who the ball's going to, so that just totally Everybody eliminates the pass rush. Everybody's getting it. It's Soto up to kick, and the kick is up, and it is good. 21 to nothing. Glenn Grizzlies leading it over the Cedar Creek Eagles. 8.38 to go. You're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network. Vite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vite has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vite, B-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vite magazine today. Get in the game with Vite Media. Socialize with us. You want to have what they call the social skill. On Twitter at KMAX Sports or catch us on Facebook. Search KMAX Sports. Just another way KMAX Sports is bringing your team to you. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Your Glenn Grizzlies are leading it 21 to nothing with 838 left to go in the second quarter here at Bastrop Memorial Field. As the Cedar Creek Eagles are getting ready to receive the kickoff. As the kick is up from Soto, it's a nice kick. And it's going to drop at the 20. And here comes special teams. Do they have another one? As no one went to pick it up, who's going to get the ball? And they are going to say Cedar Creek is going to get the ball. There was a, a short kick from Soto, and no one was there to pick it up. And the Grizzlies came in sliding trying to get it, but it was recovered by Cedar Creek. <laughs> And it would have made, Noah Holmes was the one that came in and slid right there at the end. And that's what you're talking about, the tenacity of Holmes. That's what you like about him. Six interceptions last year, yet to have one so far this year, but that's because they haven't been tested. Him and Townsley in the middle have not been tested so far this year. But you see Townsley and Holmes both making plays on special teams throughout the year. Almost came up with a huge one right there. So again, the story is the Cedar Creek offense unable to get anything going. They came into today's game, EJ, averaging 26 yards a game, 347 yards of offense. They haven't gotten much going. Uh, Houston is thrown for 11 yards. You got six yards rushing from uh, Perales and two yards from Mojica. So, so far, if my math is right, that's 19 yards of offense. 19 yards of offense. And Coach Schoenfield, if you're going to halftime, you estimate what it will be around halftime, I mean, knock on wood, but if you're keeping them under 100 yards of offense before halftime, that's exactly what you want. Absolutely. So Houston is going to be taken over from his own 13-yard line. I think there was a penalty on the play, so they got moved back even more. As receiver is in motion. Houston is going to take it himself, and he's met immediately by Brian Creel, and he's actually going to lose a couple on the play as they mark him down at the 12-yard line, and he is slow to get up as Brian Creel laid the wood on that one. Yeah, Colton Fitzhugh was the one that was in motion on that last play, and Creel just came in and laid just a vicious hit. Look, only thing that was unfortunate, it was hit low, and he's still on the ground right now. So a tough hit there. Uh, 8.23 left to go, and he's still down. Looks like he might have just knocked the wind out of him. As this defense really starting to come of age, everybody is doing their part. Again, we mentioned in the pregame about the depth that this team has. The guys that are able to insert and make moves on the offense, on the defensive side. Uh, so they're still attending to the player that's down. Um, but so far, again, the story is after that play, a loss of two yards. So you're looking at a net of nine yards of offense. And we're eight minutes to go left in the second quarter. This defense is playing tremendous right now for the Glen Grizzlies. Yeah, and there's two sides of that. Obviously, the Glenn defense playing very well, but the offense for Cedar Creek, not as advertised so far. I mean, we came in expecting to see a lot of Javon Livingston. He's been their go-to guy. He's been their huge playmaker that we've researched about and that we've seen all season. Doesn't have a lot going for him. Payne Allen, who has two touchdowns and 132 yards on the season, he hasn't been getting into the game. And Mojica, who I came into this game thinking was going to be a focal point in this offense has two yards rushing right now. I mean, if you're on that side of it for Cedar Creek, you got to be really frustrated because this offense has led you so far. And right now against this really tough Glenn Grizzlies team, I'll give them credit on that, haven't been able to get much going. So the last thing you want to see is they're bringing a stretcher out for this player. So, you know, obviously we want to have our thoughts and prayers with Colton Fitzhugh uh, getting brought out on the play. We're going to take a quick timeout here. Grizzlies leading at 21 to nothing, 8.23 left to go. 
At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, we are right in the middle of them. Smile. Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. Purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use, and portions of the proceeds go to your school. Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmaxsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmaxsports.com. We can even do some editing for you for a small fee. Purchase any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up, info at kmaxsports.com. Bringing your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, we're back at Bass Tribe Memorial Stadium. Chris is leading it 21 to nothing over Cedar Creek Eagles. We still have an injured player down for the Eagles. It's Colden Fitzhugh as he was able to take a carry on the outside. They brought him in motion to take the carry, and he was hit really hard by Brian Kelly. It was a clean tackle, but uh, not sure where they hit him or where they're attending to, so we're going to you know, let that kind of play out on the field. Right now, both teams are on their own sideline. Uh, EJ Sanchez got some score updates for us. Yeah, the Brenham Cubs currently up on the Marble Falls Mustangs 14 to nothing, and that's with 420 left to go in the second quarter, and Eastview has extended their lead over Bastrop 20 to 7. The Glen Grizzlies will close out their season against Bastrop, and probably the marquee matchup of the entire season for them is going to be going. It'll be a home game at Bible Stadium next week, and they'll be going against the Eastview Patriots. Absolutely, that's the game that everybody's looking for. Jackson Colson, the quarterback for Eastview, leading the district with a 1,061 passing yards and counting. We're looking to see what he'll do tonight. Uh, Hunter Houston, the second leading passer in the district, uh, with 851 yards coming into this game. He's only got 11 so far in this game, and he's got a big sack to his name, too, as he lost 25 on that play. Drew McGuire, third in the district, with 815 passing yards. Jacob Harkins with 793, and Andrew Stripling at Marble Falls will round out the top five. He's got 783 uh, passing touchdowns. Colson again for Eastview. 13 touchdowns right behind him. Number two, Drew McGuire is there. Uh, completion percentages, Colston is about 70%. McGuire at about 60%. After today's game, McGuire still creeping up. He'll probably be in about the 63, 64-yard range. So we're seeing a lot of good passing in this district, uh, which is good football. You want to see passing. You know, when I moved to Texas, I thought I'd just see a lot of running football in the first uh, game we get Liberty Hill and that slot T. I thought we'd see a lot of that, but you see some some high flying offenses here in the state of Texas. Yeah, and that'll be interesting because the quarterback for Eastview, uh, he's been doing a great job all season. He has three good receivers over there. He has Ochoa and the Little Brothers. He has Devon and DK Little. Those two have been doing a good job for them, and they've been. That's the game where Coach Shanefield is going to have to make sure that the defense and the secondary, especially, is going to be have to be ready for that, especially with Bagwell and Sullivan who have done a good job so far, but Bag will have the interceptions against Elga and not taking anything away from it because it was a huge play and it won a, and it sealed the game for Glenn. But Elgin is not known for throwing the football. Elgin is known f for putting the ball on the ground and trying to win using physical football. A high-flying attack like the Eastview Patriots is going to be a whole different animal for the secondary. The guys like Johnny Nua, maybe he'll be back. Cody Bagwell, Townsley. Um, Bold and Holmes, Sullivan and Armijo. It's going to be a uh, tough test for them next week. Absolutely, but as always, I think they'll, they'll be ready for that one. Let's look at the rushing leaders in the district as well. Uh, we got Zion Hester from Eastview. So Eastview, we know how big that offense is. They're leading in passing and they're leading in rushing. Uh, Hester is averaging 140 yards a game, 698 on the season with 10 rushing touchdowns. He's averaging 6.1 a carry. Peter McFarlane, we saw him last week. 
uh, two weeks ago with Elgin. He's 456, averaging 91 yards. Mojica, haven't seen much of him today. He's third in the district. But here are our boys now. Julian Morris, fourth with 420 yards. Lamont Slade, sixth with 320. Seven and Corin Thompson, 250 yards. So Glenn has three of their own players in the top ten on the rushing leaders uh, for yards. If we're looking at touchdowns, Zion Hester, 10 rushing touchdowns. Lamont Slade in at second with seven touchdowns. Julian Morris is at fifth, tied for fifth with four touchdowns. Again, player is still down. The medical team, they're trying to get him on the stretcher and get him off. Again, this is not what you want to see in a game like this, you know, especially um, – you know, any game that you're watching, NFL, college, high school, so everybody's really silent right now waiting for, you know, the staff to kind of get Colton on this stretcher and get him off the field. But, again, this is just a very tough moment to watch. But, you know, fortunately this is part of football and, you know, there, there are injuries and let's just hope that he's okay and and uh, everything in that good nature. Yeah, next week we'll try to get an update. We'll try to follow up with Coach Edwards for the Eagles. We'll try to get an update, make sure that he's okay. And hopefully he'll be back on the field at some point this season. It was a big hit right there by Creel. Absolutely. So just to reset everything, 21 nothing. The Grizzlies needed 8:23 to go in this one. EJ, if I told you when we started the game when we had our points to the game that Sam Martin was going to throw a touchdown, <laughs> Lee Pollock was going to catch a touchdown, Clay Upton was going to run for a touchdown again. What would you have said? I would have told you to leave. I mean, <laughs> those are three three guys that are playmakers, but not exactly in that way. I mean, we you saw we listened to Coach Shanefield at the beginning of the broadcast that Upton has just been dinged up a little bit, hasn't been really been able to keep going. But he's been somebody that they've really looked for early in this game. And obviously, we see Sam Martin, who has probably the, one of the better hands on the team, better pair of hands on the team, him throwing a pass and not you expect somebody on the offense obviously to catch it, not one of the defensive captains, Lee Pollock to be able to come up with that ball. So just really interesting to see how it's been working. Also going to bring uh, Fitzhew off the field. He's already signaled to the crowd. So hopefully everything is going to be okay long term. Short term, he's a little banged up. Big hit by Brian Creel. But uh, great job by Fitzhew giving a pound and waving to the crowd here. Uh, so again, Good. tough scene. And again, if you're Brian Creel, you know, it's a tough spot. You know, you want to do your job, you want to hit somebody, so uh, you know he might uh, be shaken up on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, Creel, I mean, you've, talk, you've talked to all of them. You know how good how good, good people kids. That, yeah, good people, the, the good guys that they are. He's definitely probably going to ask Shane Field to follow up with Coach Edwards, make sure he's okay. Wouldn't be surprised to see a text here and there between the two of them, a little exchange to make sure he's okay. All right, so we're going to resume the game now. Cedar Creek is getting ready to take over. They're at the 13 yard line. They got second down and 15 on this one. Houston is in the shotgun. Back to pass. And he's looking, surveying the field pressure again. He's going to flush him out to the right side. He's trying to go somewhere. There's Keegan Moore. He's going to wrap him out and pull him out of bounds at about the 12 yard line. So another loss on the play. Well, they'll give him the 13, it looks like. So they'll put it at the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to be third down and 15. Again, Keegan Moore, another of these uh, linebackers coming in, subbing in, getting a job done. And he's going to run off to the sideline. Came in, get a pressure, get a sack, go right back out. It's like everybody just does their job, and this is just so awesome to see. A little frustration right there from Javon Livingston. He was in the middle of the field throwing his hands up, jumping up, trying to say, hey, I have a chance to make a play. He's a guy that they've really shut down so far, and he's been their big play guy. Absolutely. Third and 16. Houston back to pass, rolling out to the left. Pressure again comes, and he avoids it. He's trying to get out. He's going to try to get across the 15. He's going to get out to the 20-yard line. So he's going to pick up eight on the play. It's great job by Houston avoiding the rush there. But it's going to bring up fourth down and eight. And again, we keep talking about it. We're going to sound like a broken record for the rest of the night. But Houston is looking for somebody to come open. It just hasn't happened. And by the time that he finally finds a man there are three Grizzlies that are in his face ready to make ready to make a play so this defense on both sides of it playing really well with 729 left to go in the second quarter Houston back to pass on fourth and eight they're going for it Creel's going to go back in motion actually they will punt it as Salas is going to punt it and it's going to go out of bounds at the Cedar Creek 40 yard line so a 20 yard punt by Salas and the Grizzlies looking for great field position again 
Yeah, you want to see them try to keep their foot on the gas, but we're going to keep talking about it, we're going to keep talking about it until they prove they can, and that's the one piece of their game on this winning streak that they haven't been able to do. They haven't been able to put away opponents whenever they've shown the ability to dominate the game early. And what's it's more incredible, EJ, is we mentioned the yards per game. Uh, let's go into their schedule. They started the season off with a 31 to nothing win over Reagan. They lose to Aikens, 23 to 13. Then they go to Fredericksburg, put up 31 points in a loss. As they give us the stubble field, he's going to break across, out towards the 40, inside the 35. It's going to be brought down at the 32-yard line. So eight-yard pickup for Roderick Stubblefield out of the backfield. Yeah, that tackle was made right there by Javon Livingston. So Livingston not getting a ton of action on the offensive side of the ball has made a couple of de tackles as a defensive back. So 31 points against Fredericksburg. They beat Brenham 31 again. They scored 28 last week. They don't have any points on the board, less than 10 yards of offense. So this Glenn Grizzlies team, they beat up on teams a lot, but this is a good football team that they're playing right now. As the ball's outside to Marsh, he's going to break across the 30. He's going to lead his way to the 29-and-a-half yard line. Looks like they're going to give him. So three yards on the pickup, second down and seven for the Grizzlies. And that was Collins that was on the play for the Eagles. So first and ten, first and let's be second and seven. That looks we got like another injured player down on the field. This is going to be a Grizzly player now down. Trying to get an idea of who it is. And got a physical game going on between these two district teams here at Bastrop Memorial Stadium. We're going to take a quick break. Another injury timeout. You're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAX Sports by Media Network. This is Kevin McAdams. You know, from the McAdams Company Creative, we love to make commercials. Let us make yours. Yep, that's me. While my voice is amazing and does sound wonderful, I've been given to understand that every once in a while, y'all might want to hear somebody different. So I went out and recruited some guys. So first, I'd like to introduce Blake. Good afternoon. My name's Blake Herrera, and my voice will make you feel safe on an airplane. This guy over here, this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. True story. When I was in college, girls used to love it when I read their textbooks to them. And I'm Kevin, and my voice makes women want to buy new cars. Let's talk about what we can do for you. Reach out to me by phone or text 512-653-9491, or check me out online at themcadamscompany.com. I'm Kevin McAdams with The McAdams Company Creative. No longer working alone. I love to make commercials. Let me make yours. Purchase a copy of this or any KMAC broadcast for personal use, and portions of the proceeds go to your school. Whether you're making a highlight video or just want to be able to enjoy this game years in the future, send us a note to info at kmacsports.com. That's I-N-F-O at kmacsports.com. We can even do some editing for you for a small fee. Purchase any broadcast for personal use. Hit us up, info at kmacsports.com. Bringing your teams and your highlights to you. We are KMAC Sports. This is the Sports Network. Uh, so looks like Julian Morris is going to be able to get up and walk off on his own accord. As he's going to be help off. Looks like he's limping on that side. So uh, we'll monitor that situation uh, for us. So Julian Morris able to get up and walk off the field. A little bit slow there. So. Again, when we talk to Coach Shadefield after the game, and again this week we'll get an update for you. They're already down Corin Thompson, so it's going to be, you know, let's see if we see Shamir Nichols now. He's going to have to be the next man up. We've seen Upton, we've seen Slade, uh, so we'll probably see a little bit of Shamir Nichols or even Ronderick Stubblefield, who's got a lot of speed as well as he's in the game as a receiver. Kobe Sorrell is in at second tight end for the team as well, so a lot of substitutions going on. Again, with a 21-point lead, you can kind of do these things. So they're going to call it first and 10. From the 29, McGuire back to pass. He's under pressure. He's going to take off. He's looking. Spins a tackle inside the 30. They're going to mark him down at the 27-yard line. So a two-yard pickup for McGuire. A lot of moving on that play. Yeah, McGuire showing that not only is he known for his arm, he's known his legs. I mean, picked up a 16-yard gain earlier. It was brought back by the holding. But McGuire can make some plays with his feet. And it will be interesting to see how creative Coach Shamefield gets with these new packages, with this new personnel using Stubblefield maybe out of the backfield as a as a ball carrier, then you might see Shamir Nichols go in between the tackles like we've seen him do in a substitution role. So a lot going on. I think the Grizzlies are gonna call a timeout here or just waiting to get the play on. Still waiting for the play clock to get going. 
as the referees are actually trying to figure out where to spot the ball. I thought it was a little tricky because I thought on the Julian Morris play, that was first down, so it should have been second down and seven. So this should have been a second down play now. So let's see where they're moving the ball and they're trying to get the down. They're still signaling that it's first down on the sidelines. And now they're starting to move the Grizzlies back. Calling a holding penalty. It's a little frustrating not to know what's going on. They're moving them back all the way to about midfield. A 15-yard penalty on the Grizzlies. I wonder what that's about. So they'll be back at their own 44-yard line. 6.09 left to go in the second quarter. Grizzlies leading it 21 to nothing. Uh, as they are going to be faced now with a first and 25. As the line to gain is the 19-yard line. They need the Eagles' 19-yard line for a first down. McGuire, back to pass, Stubblefield, screen pass, outside, breaks a tackle to the 40, inside the 30, and breaks another tackle. What moves by Roderick Stubblefield making things happen on first and second down in long situations. They'll mark him down at the 27-yard line out of bounds, a 17-yard pickup. Yeah, finally brought down right there by Damian Perez. And Stubblefield showing why he deserves to start getting a lot more snaps on the offensive side of the ball. Made three guys miss on that last time. And Sam Martin did a good job downfield blocking on that player here on the near sideline. So he's got two catches for 38 yards. And he's also got an eight-yard rush on the game. So Stubblefield coming up big. They'll put him in motion again. Fake the give to him. Slays to the outside to the left. He's got blockers. He's across the 20. Inside the 10. He's going to keep pushing his way. They're going to mark him down at the eight-yard line. So a 19-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. And this Grizzlies first and goal. The last line of defense for the Eagles on that one was Ashton Figuero Figueroa. And he barely just got enough to take Slade down right there. So Slade might take a little bit more of a leadership role in this sense when he sees that two of his guys who he shares the ball with a lot, he is now the guy and the guy that they're probably going to go to here in the red zone. 19 yards on the pickup. Slade, seven carries, 43 yards. As uh, Glenn is going to call a timeout here. And what I find so interesting is that there's a, all, all, something that's always said in sports where it's not always the better team wins, usually the deeper team wins. And that's what you see from the Grizzlies. I mean, this is a good football team that they're playing. The Cedar Creek Eagles have had a, a really good season and sub surprising to some coming into the season. But Glenn just, it seems like every single time they're faced with adversity, or somebody's not having a huge game. Somebody else is having a bigger game. I mean, we saw a couple weeks ago Hatter not getting into the game, but in that same game, Lamont Slade with four touchdowns. Uh, there was a part of the interview that we'll try to play part three of the interview with Coach Shanefeld. He said on Tuesday, his biggest concern for the week, I said, what was the mood of the team after, the, you know, it's winning streak, what's going on? And he said, you know, what, what hurt me the most this week was uh, we were off on Monday and Tuesday with the holiday and some trainings going on. We weren't able to have Monday practices in the morning. We had to move them back. We had practice at 5 o'clock at night. Just a routine. And he said on Tuesday, he said they had their best practice of the season on Tuesday. Everything was hitting on cylinders. And he said, you know, you can't win a game on Tuesday, but you can definitely lose a game on Tuesday with your preparation. These guys have been working hard. They're still hungry. This is not enough to get a couple of wins. And they're showing why now. Everybody is working hard and holding everybody accountable. And you're seeing it here. First down and eight. Give. Slade. Outside. It's actually Stumblefield, and he is in the end zone for a touchdown. So Coach Shanefield was right. Roderick Stumblefield getting the end zone at some point, and it's the third touchdown in three weeks by a new player for the Grizzlies. We had uh, Nichols against Elgin, Upton against Flugerville Weiss, and now Roderick Stumblefield against the Cedar Creek Eagles, an eight-yard carry. And they're going to call a chop block on the play, so they're going to bring that back. So hold the phone. Hold the phone on the celebration on the on the Roderick Stubblefield parade in Leander <laughs> that will be taking place next week. Uh, absolutely, great point <laughs> to make. Homecoming next week at Bible Stadium. Uh, it'll start off at Glen High School as well. We've got homecoming October nineteenth. As uh, EJ is excited about this game, he's been talking about it for weeks. They'll take on Eastview, and they're going to move this ball all the way back fifteen yards on the chop block. And if we're talking about next week's game, since you're bringing up how excited I've been, it's going to be a huge crowd on both sides. Leander, not far from Georgetown, where Eastview is out of. So it's going to be a huge game on both sides. And honestly, it might come down 
If, it, if both teams continue to play the way that they have, it might come down to who wins the district. So, weird spot on the ball. It's actually going to be at the 16-yard line. First and goal from the 16 as they're hitting Stumblefield again. He's their long guy on <laughs> first and long. And he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play. If there's any play that this offense hasn't run very super efficiently, and there's there, there it comes at a premium. I mean, there hasn't been a lot of plays that they have executed perfectly. The wide receivers, the screen off to the far side has not been something that they've been able to get a huge chunk of yardage on consistently. Second down and goal from the 16-yard line. Stumblefield and Martin out to the left. Henderson out to the right. Clay Upton in as receiver. Colby Sorrell on the inside in the slot. McGuire rolling out, looking, hits Stubblefield, drops the ball at the 10-yard line. Great pass there from McGuire on the run. Stubblefield unable to come up with third and long now. Yeah, rare uh, physical mistake right there for the Grizzlies. I mean, we, we always talk about their offense, but you don't see a lot of drops from this team. You don't see a lot of drops. You don't see a lot of missed blocks. Zero fumbles on the year. And that's something that you know Coach Shameville has made a point because you can <laughs> lose game. The, whoever wins the turnover battle usually wins the game. He told me fumbling is a choice. <laughs> I said, no, <laughs> that's a tough coaching if you ask me. 4-0-3 left to go in the first half. Grizzlies, third and long. Third and goal from the 16-yard line. Trying to capitalize here. McGuire back to pass, surveying the field. And he's looking. He's looking. He's going to take off. He's going to run. To be brought down at the 15 yard line. So he's going to pick up a yard on the play. He's going to bring fourth and goal from the 15. Yeah, Kobe Sorrell was in the back of the end zone throwing his hands up. I believe it was Sam Martin that was also there on the back end begging for McGuire just to give him a shot on the jump ball. McGuire, though, making the smart play, taking whatever yardage he can get. And no surprise, Coach Shanefield going for it here on fourth down. If you don't get it, you pin Cedar Creek back inside the 15. You trust your defense. And again, Unfortunately, with that injury timeout to Julian Morris, and more rest for that defense to kind of get going now. And they've been sitting on that bench for a little while, but they're all standing up. They're ready to go. So if they don't convert, you give up the ball, and you like your chances. I mean, this is a good problem to have if you're a coach Shane. It's like, which side do you trust more? Do you trust your offense who's put up 21 points on a very good defense, or do you trust your defense that's given up zero points to a very good offense? So second timeout taken for Glenn. They're going to talk it over and try to come up with a play here. 21-0. 3-11 left to go in the second half. Again, the Grizzlies all over the Cedar Creek Eagles. Again, Cedar Creek, I can't stress enough, averaging 26.8 points a game, 347 yards total, 177 yards on the ground, 170 yards passing. They had 17 touchdowns coming into today's game, 10 rushing, 7 passing. Uh, this Grizzly defense, we talk about the offense so much, but this defense, maybe that's the identity of this team. I mean... We've seen so far this season, we had the game against Mc, like McNeil. McCallum, McCallum, and we saw Jalen Sutton. Sutton coming into week Averaging three. Averaging 170 a game. I just came off a 250-yard performance the week before. 45 yards in that one. And 45 yards on, it's not even like they went away from him. It still had about 16, 17 carries. They couldn't get him going. I mean, it just shows you how much attention to detail this team goes through in the film room and during practice. This defense has done such a good job eliminating your best weapon. I couldn't have said it better myself. So fourth and goal from the 15-yard line. Clay Upton is the back in the backfield. Sam Martin out to the left. McGuire throwing across the field. Sam Martin, does he have it? Can't hold on. As Sam Martin dove to try to make a diving catch, unable to come up with the play, and he's disappointed, but he'll jog off the field, and Cedar Creek will take over on downs. I mean, McGuire put it to where only Martin could catch it. And Martin, I've, we always talk about him, the res usually the go-to guy. He has the great hands, really s quick. Wasn't able to make the play right there, but did go all out on that ball. That <laughs> it's just, we just think about how good this team is on so many aspects. We came into today's game worrying about Alfred Collins, Ian Flowers, Cade Edwards, Garza, Reggie Smith. They, they I haven't seen them at all. Again, McGuire yet to go down. He's been flushed out of the pocket, but they haven't tagged him for a loss at all. As Cedar Creek taking over. First and 10 from their own 15. The give is to Perales. He's going to bounce outside. Nice gain on that play. He's going to get to the 22-yard line. And that's my question for, oh, it looks like it's a little bit extracurricular activity going on around the 10-yard line involved in that for Glenn is Brian Creel. 
but so we'll try to see who the penalty is on. It looks like he was tangled up right there with Perales, and that's exactly going back to my point that Coach Edwards going away from Mojica, who's the, the sophomore running back, who's been such a force all season long, over 300 yards, and it looks like that penalty will go against Cedar Creek, so 15 yards will be sub subtracted from the 22, so if it is a 15-yard penalty, it will bring them all the way down to the 5-yard line, yeah. the 7-yard line. So I think what they do in these uh, instances, EJ, I think they go half the distance, so they'll probably push them back 11, but they're not doing anything. So they call these penalties. They move the ball. Sometimes they don't move the ball. Always tough to find out what's going on with these referees. Nonetheless, second and three for the Eagles. Ball will stay where it's at. 240 and counting left in the first half. Give is to Perales, and he is brought down immediately by Jamal Johnson in on the tackle. That's Petey Cervantes, excuse me. Petey Cervantes in on the tackle. Cervantes had the big sack earlier earlier in the game that really shifted some of the momentum. And we'll, we'll talk about the halftime show a little bit, and I'll allude to it right now. The turning point of this game might have been the decision by Coach Shanefield with the fake field goal with Soto. Came up with a touchdown from Martin to Pollock, and that changed the game right there. Absolutely. Third and four. Houston, plenty of time to pass. He's going to take off and run. He's going to have the first down. He's across the 30, and he's looking for more. He's going to get out of bounds at the 34-yard line. So a nice play and a nice pickup for Hunter Houston on a 13-yard scramble on a first down. Yeah, the biggest gain so far tonight for the offense for the Cedar Creek Eagles. And what was interesting about that last play is they completely cleared out the near sideline. All It was trips left on the far sideline. So all the defense went to the far sideline and left open a huge hole for Houston to take it himself. Big gain right there for the Eagles. 159 left to go in the first half. Grizzlies 21 nothing. First and 10 for the Eagles from their own 34. They need the 44 for a first down. Houston back to pass. Throws almost picked off by number four, Bryson Hunter. As he had his hands on that one. <laughs> We're just <laughs> mentioning so many players in. It just this team is so deep and everybody is playing and getting some action. And it's also two good fresh bodies, fresh legs. I mean, we see it with so many teams during the season. Usually there's three guys that you can bet are going to have at least 10 carries in that game or 10 tackles. Can't, it's hard to do right here with this Glenn team. Second and 10 from the 34. 154 left to go in this one. Houston back to pass. He's throwing across the field. And Johnson might have tipped it as the ball was intended for Ty Pruitt in completing. He's a little frustrated now. Yeah, I mean, receiver, receivers like the ball. I mean, who wouldn't want the ball? But when you have guys that are used to getting three to five touches a game and they're not getting any it's like Livingston Pruitt and some, a guy we haven't talked about at all today Payne Allen who had 132 yard and 12 bucks and 12 yards a clip hasn't even been targeted so you see these guys they want the ball they want to try to help their team but the front seven for the Glenn Grizzlies has just done such a good job of not letting Houston get comfortable in the pocket Houston 11 yards passing in this one as he is one for eight one for nine excuse me third down and ten and Houston back to pass. He's under pressure. He's going to throw. And that's broken up by number 26, Lee Pollock. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And Salas is out to punt for the Eagles. 145 left to go in the second second quarter. Your coach, Shanefield, I'm expecting him to be aggressive right here and try to put an exclamation point on their work of this beautiful, beautiful first half that they've played so far. Absolutely. So Sam Martin is back to return. He's standing at his own 40-yard line. Last time Salas came out to punt, had, a, uh, I think, a 12-yard punt. So Salas standing at his own 21-yard line. And he's kicking straight ahead as Martin, no one's going to get this one. It's going to take a very generous Eagles bounce, and he's going to roll all the way to the 37-yard line for Glenn. So a 31-yard kick for Salas, much better than the last one. And Glenn will take over. they got one timeout left, a minute 32 left to go. And from wherever you may be joining us tonight, you may notice that you don't hear a ton of crowd noise. We are on the Cedar Creek side of the field. Not a whole lot to celebrate right now if you're a Cedar Creek Eagles fan. I mean, Crowd mic's on. It is. It's, it's on full blast, folks. And <laughs> 11 yards for your quarterback, and none of your playmakers have a reception over 10 yards, obviously. Not a lot to cheer about right now for the home team. Glenn taking over from their own 37-yard line. McGuire back to pass. 
He's looking, faces a little bit of pressure, able to get it off. And is it caught? Are they going to call it a catch? They say he's out of bounds as he was looking for Jarvis Henderson. Great job from McGuire to avoid the sack. I mean, if you saw my face right here in the booth right now, folks, my mouth was wide open on that play that McGuire <laughs> even thought about trying to complete a pass right there. Yeah. I thought it was going immediately out of bounds, but it was, came up about a foot short and making a really nice play right there near the 41-yard line. Unfortunately, not being able to do it, but McGuire staying calm under pressure. See if they run the ball here. Uh, Slade is in the backfield, second and 10 from their own 37. McGuire back to pass again. This one is tipped at the line of scrimmage by Justin Hunter. Turner, excuse me, no, Jacob Turner. Justin Turner. <laughs> NLCS you know, yeah. game one tonight, <laughs> folks. <laughs> I was surprised Gio Gonzalez, when did he get traded to Milwaukee? When I, I heard the game one started, it was when they had that fire sale, I guess. I believe it was a deadline deal. So third down and 10 for the Grizzlies. As they're, they're aggressive here, as you mentioned. They're trying to really get going. And it'll be third and 10 from their own 37. McGuire again back to pass. He rolls out to his right. He's looking as he finds Rondrick Stubblefield. The line they're going to give him is the 44-yard line, so a 7-yard pickup for Rondrick Stubblefield. Really physical tackle right there by Jacob Turner. Obviously not happy. I mean, as a defense, you give up 21 points, but again, that's kind of a bend-don't-break scenario to where if you only give up, if you give up less than 25 in the first half, you give your team usually a shot to win. Right now, this defense has done their best to do their job, and they don't have a huge shot right now. So Coach Shanefield trusting his defense as he's going to go for it here on fourth down and three inside of his own territory. Roderick Stubblefield, three catches, 45 yards. Drew McGuire, and it's 15 pass attempts. I'll get the completion in a second, 142 passing yards. And they are going to bring the offense off the field. And last time out for Glenn. Looks like they're going to punt it away. 31 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Grizzlies lead it 21 to nothing. Just the dominant performance so far in the first half. And we'll touch on it a little bit during the halftime show. We have some great interviews coming out. We have Coach Schoenfield. Again, we also have Noah Holmes who will join us on the halftime show. But this team is just firing on all cylinders. Every single player doing his job so far to help this team win. Coach Shanefield, <laughs> not, show, not showing field. We started off, man. We went the first four weeks with it. We got used to it. And then, you know, kudos to him for <laughs> never correcting us. At least we heard we were having to hear it was a common mistake, at least, that everybody does it. Exactly. So, uh, timeout on the field for Glenn. They're either trying to draw up a play or they're going to punt it. Right now, the ball is at their own 44 yard line after the seven yard pickup by Ronderick Stubblefield. I mean, you like their chances. They've been converting all night. I mean, it's not a. Again, not a terrible call right here if you're Coach Shanefield. Worst case scenario, you hand it over to a team, to a defense, that's giving up, seems like, a half a yard of play right now. So it'll be Derek Childs to punt. He's going to be standing at his own 31-yard line. So Childs is going to punt back to receive. Again, Fitzhugh was injured. He's out of the game. So it's going to be, looks like, number 12, Ashton Figueroa to return. Childs punts. It's a short punt. See if it takes a bounce. They're going to go out of bounds. They're going to mark it out at the 46 yard line so a two yard punt so we've seen for two Derek Childs and Coach Shanefield not happy with his punter right now as I believe Cedar Creek is going to take over with 25 seconds and two timeouts usually the metric used for punters is net average right now and it seems like Childs is right now is four yeah so it's like he keeps hitting that ball off the side of his foot and I know they're trying to go directional they don't want to see any returners out there but uh, you know, let's just see if he can get one and just boom it back to the center of the field just to get some more room. So uh, we mentioned how high profile this, this offense is. And a wounded eagle is still an eagle. As Houston out to throw, he's throwing deep, and he's got an open receiver inside the 30-yard line. And there's Livingston in on the catch. Yeah, seven t the clock will stop with 17 seconds left to go. And That's South actually Davion Clark making his first catch of the season on that play. Davion Clark with that play. Ball's at the 29-yard line. Coach Edwards is definitely going to try to get in the end zone right here. I mean, there's no doubt about that. 21-7 is a lot better than 21-3. 
if you're the on the Eagles side. And Salas's longest field, I checked this earlier, his longest field goal of the season is 35 yards. So their goal right now is to try to get to the 18-yard line. That's their target line if you're listening right now. So they use their first time out. There's 17 seconds left to go in the first half. And Davion Clark for his first catch of the season, the senior, big spot there. Got to be ready when your number's called. I mean, we keep talking about it. The defense doing a good job of getting pressure. That time, they didn't really get in Houston's space enough. And Houston had a ton of time and had a lot of time to find Clark down the right seam. So Cedar Creek now, Coach Edwards, trying to get some good plays in uh, in case they're able to convert and see what they're going to do. Do they want to spike it? Do they want to uh, call a timeout? Because remember, in high school and college, you get a first down, clock stops until you get to the line of scrimmage. So let's see how they handle everything here. As it's going to be first and 10 from the Grizzly 29. See if this defense can come up with some pressure. That's a different quarterback in now. This Figueroa is back to pass. He's throwing. He had to receive it down. It's Livingston this time inside the 20 yard line. You're going to mark him down at the 18 yard line. So an 11 yard pickup. Ashton Figueroa to Livingston. Yeah, just hit their target line right there that I mentioned on the previous play. They did get to the 18, and Salas has made a 35 yarder on the season so this defense played well all, played so well all game now towards the end of the second quarter the last thing you want to do is try to think that Cedar Creek is in it nine seconds left to go they burned their last time out so you got a chance to go too deep into the end zone so uh, Townsley and, and, and these cover corners and and Noah Holmes gonna have to make a big play to end this first half and we mentioned they had opportunities. They had the ball at one point at the 8-yard line. They get a touchdown. He gets pulled back by an illegal block. And they also had a time earlier in the drive where they didn't get points either. So, you know, they should have about 30, 35 points on this board right now. It's 21. If Cedar Creek can get on the board, get some confidence going into the second half. And obviously, if you're listening right now and you think you might be complaining, we're just being greedy at this point because this team has played just a marvelous first half. Absolutely, again, yeah. there's always little stuff that you can do better in a football game. And right now, and what it's been for Glenn, obviously on a three-game winning streak, it's hard to find a lot to complain about. The one thing you would want to see is them keeping their foot on the gas and will sound like a broken record for the rest of the season as long as they keep playing this way. But you want to be able to put opponents away. They haven't done it. And now a chance for the Eagles to try to get on the board before the half. So it's Figueroa in that quarterback. As Davion Clark again in motion. And Figueroa back to pass. He's looking. Throws a favor on the back of the end zone. No good. No flag on the play. As it was looks like Noah Holmes in on the coverage. And Dom Sullivan. Noah Holmes, Dom Sullivan in on the coverage. Four seconds left to play in the first half. So you're going to have time for one more play, and you wonder who it's going to go to for the Eagles. But Ty Pruitt right there, not happy that there was no penalty. Cedar Creek wanted one. It was not to come. So they are going to bring up Salas now to kick a field goal. Ball is going to be down at the 25-yard line. So there, here we go. For season long, 35-yarder coming up. Kick is down. The hold is down, and it is wide but it is good. It looks like it just curled in at the last moment. So Cedar Creek getting on the board on the 35-yard field goal by Nada Salas. And it's 21-3 as the first half comes to a close on that one. You're listening to Grizzlies Football on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, just imagine Inner Space Caverns, if it was full of sports. Okay, so, so which way to the game? Man, it sure is dark in here for sports. Ah, dang it. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Bringing your teams to you in the stadiums, ballparks, and gymnasiums where they belong. We are KMAX Sports. This is the KMAX Sports 
We bring you back to beautiful Memorial Stadium here in Bastrop, Texas, where your Glen Grizzlies are currently up on the Cedar Creek Eagles, 21 to three. Great first half put on by the Grizzlies, and we'll be bringing you a halftime show soon that will include interviews with Coach Coach Rob Shanefield, along with safety Noah Holmes, and we'll have that ready for you. But that is after your Glen Grizzly Band. So we'll be happy to take you out. Enjoy the halftime show by your Glen Grizzly Band. Halftime performance is the Glen Marching Band. The 2018 Glen Band Show is entitled Big Sky. Tonight, the band will perform selections of their production featuring music by Aaron Copeland, Billy Joel, and Edward Griege. Soloists and small ensemble members this year are Mackenzie James, Quinn Palladino, Orlando Rivera, Mauricio Pena, and Ellie Slayton. Music arranged by Mr. Ryan George, Tyler Sammons, and Matt Pentland. Drill design by Jeffrey Thompson and visual consulting by Leon May. Member of the week is trombone player James Ross, and section of the week is the alto saxophones. The Glen Band and Color Guard is under the direction of Kim Shuttlesworth, Amy Suggs, Jacob Gall, and Michael Costner. Please help me welcome drum majors Mia Crane and Nicholas Brands and the Grizzly Marching Band.
the Grizzly Marching Band. The Grizzly Band has earned sweepstakes in both marching and concert contests since they were established in 2016. In the fall of 2017, the Grizzly Band was named the Bands of America San Antonio Super Regional Class 2A Bronze Medalists. In July, the Glen Band Wind Ensemble earned 11th place in the Texas Music Educators Association 4A State Honor Band Contest. The Grizzly Band would like to thank all the parents, boosters, and administration for their continued support of the arts. Sports Network, and this is what we do. Look at left, throws into the end That's zone. Snap again, he hits the turf, and Devon scoops it up. Cameron Wilkins the corner on the end zone. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. If you like the sound of that, then let us broadcast your team. Send an email to Merle at KMAXSports.com or Chuck at KMAXSports.com to find out how. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. It's what we do. We are KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, halftime here at Bastrop Memorial Stadium. Grizz is leading it 21 to 3. We got about 13 minutes left to go in uh, halftime. We just heard your awesome Grizzly band. Let's take a moment. Uh, as we mentioned during the pregame show, we didn't have enough time. Let's take a moment and catch up with Noah Holmes. The senior safety for the Glen Grizzlies. Let's see what he had to say this week. All right, we're now joined by defensive back safety, special team specialist Noah Holmes. Noah, thanks for joining the pregame show. Uh, I was at practice last week or week before, and I saw you working a lot on trying to get get behind the coverage and block a couple of kicks. Now we've seen you block two kicks. You blocked the punt. I think you blocked a little too hard last week because the ball <laughs> ended up scooting into the end zone. But talk to me about. Uh, just your special teams play. I've really been focusing on them because I kind of like seeing like as we go in like our meeting rooms, we can tell like how special teams affects like our position on the field and how important it is to like the offense and like how we have to get them a good uh, position to score. So my broadcast partner EJ Sanchez, he calls you the enforcer right there, coming in uh, from that safety position, stopping on a lot of runs. I think you had a couple strips earlier in the season too. So talk to me about. Uh, just your defensive presence and, and just being a part of this really awesome unit that pitched a shutout, essentially, <laughs> against Weiss last week. I think in my position, I play an important role, especially in the secondary, because my coach depends a lot on me to get the coverages out and like just make sure everybody's in the same coverage and make sure everybody knows what's going on. And um, I think I play an important role, just not as in, like, uh, tackling, but also like the technicality of like the defense and making sure everybody's lined up so we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like the games are loud, but um, I'm mainly been focused on getting like signals out, like hand signals, trying to help my team, um, trying to communicate with them all just to get us all like on the same page just so our defense runs smoothly. You have two new pieces now in Bagwell and Dom Sullivan. They both come up with interceptions the last two weeks as younger players coming up and, and pitching right in. Talk to me about it, those young guys and, and how important it is for them to step up for you. Uh, in the beginning of, like, when we first started, uh, they were both on offense. Uh, I know Dom was, and he just transitioned over, I think. The thing I like about him is he, like, learned, he, like, learns real quick. Like, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about him, like, messing up or just, like, like, he's just the type of kid who just, like, catches on quick and we can just tell him what to do. And he'll um, he'll follow directions and he'll know what to do. And um, also, same thing with Cody because they're both uh, fast learners. And I'm glad to have them on the defensive side now to also help us out a little bit more. Um, I think they're great players. They uh, run the coverages really well. They're good at the technique. Even though they're fairly new to them, they, like, they just, sna like, snapped to them. It just came easy to them like it was, like, a natural and um, I just think that they're great additions to the defense 
and I'm grateful to have them on our side of the field because they are making plays, and even though they new to the defense. Um, this offense is averaging almost 43 points a game the last three weeks. What's it like? How is it, I don't want to say easy, but not to get complacent on defense, to know, hey, these guys are going to score a bunch of points for us. We don't have to really yeah. shut it down the way we've been doing it lately. I, I like our offense, you know. I, I don't really know what's like going on over there, like during the practice. <laughs> there. I, know, I just know they're doing their thing over there, and I know they have it like they're holding it down on that offensive side, and um, it really makes us uh, have like a better time on defense because we know, even though we do mess up sometimes on defense, and if a team gets a big drive, we'll know we can like uh, depend on the offense to help us get us back in the game because they have been uh, getting us back in the game. They've been producing a lot lately. I've asked everybody every week that we've done this now that we're coming up on you on week six. Uh, you're part of the original uh, OGs here coming on in. What's it like now to be on this winning streak and kind of see everything happening in this first district season? Yeah, it's a great feeling because um, when we first opened up in school, I was a basketball player only. So I was kind of new to the game of football. Like I played in middle school a little bit, but I wasn't really like focused on it. I was only focused on basketball at the time. And um, I didn't know what to expect from it. I didn't know, like, because Coach, like, he always talked about how other coaches are always going to be like, oh, you guys are going to be good in a couple of years. And um, don't worry about it. Give it, like, about five years. And I'm like, in five years, I'm going to be, like, gone. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't really know what to expect. But um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm grateful that I joined the team and that I'm, like, with the team as I am now. Because it's, it's a whole new experience. Uh, the thing about football I like is that's a team sport and it brought us all together. And um, I saw the past few games because we won three in a row. And I'm actually like, I'm excited now because now I see that um, since we have like all of our grade levels in now and we're like actually a full varsity team, I see what it is to actually be part of the football team and be like on a winning streak with like my brothers out on the field. And uh, it's, it's a great experience. I mean, like I would have never thought of like, playing of uh, football in general, um, we all come together as a team and we're all, we all formed a brotherhood. And I think we have like a very tight bond to each other. And just seeing that we can accomplish the things that we've accomplished, even though people have been saying that, oh, we're gonna be good later on and you're gonna give it a couple of years. It's just glad to know that we can do the things now that we're doing. And it's glad to see, or I'm glad to see that I can like had this time with my brothers like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity because I mean like in, after high school you have like college sports or whatever but just like the fact that you're in high school and you've been like going to like elementary school with these kids middle school and like we all come together for like one final ride I think it's just like a great experience to have and just like we're winning as much as we are and I just think it's like extraordinary like I never would have thought like this would have been a part of my life so it's very special to me absolutely it's a great word so that's Noah Holmes a senior joining us on the pregame show as we get ready for the showdown with the Cedar Creek Eagles thanks so much for joining us Noah yes, thank you alright so I was senior Noah Holmes again a great a longer interview but I just talked about you know just being an original Grizzly, the OGs that they call them, and you know, coming around, transferring from Rouse. He was a basketball player, and Coach Shanefield and Coach Coscroft, they, they saw him, and they just saw the type of body he is, the big guy, 6'3", you know, very lean, very, excuse me, very strong basketball player, and they got him to, to buy into this football program, and he's still learning. He's still raw. You know, I, I think that if he was like a junior with, you know, he – He's going to be on somebody's radar, and he's going to end up playing somewhere next year. Um, he's just got so much physical talent. He's a really smart kid, sweet kid, smart kid, everything that you want for your player to be. And, uh, you know, he's just one of the many great kids that are on this team as uh, we see him and the rest of this team flying out here, getting ready for the second half kickoff. We're about six minutes away from kickoff. Uh, as always, we encourage you, if you're listening, thank you for all the support and listening to us. Myself, EJ Sanchez, Randy Fry. You know, and, and, and the heads of K Mac Sports, Chuck Licata, Merle Bertrand, Suda Venkat, we appreciate all the support that you guys give us and listening to the broadcast every week. We encourage you to reach out to us with any questions or comments or even any concerns. Send me an email. My personal email is Alan, A L L A N, the letter L, my last name, Cepeda, C E, P as in Peter, E, D as in Delta, A, at gmail.com. Again, Alan. 
lcepeda at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Love any feedback you give us. Um, you know, thank you so much for supporting Grizzlies football. And uh, we're going to take another quick break, and we're going to be back and get ready for the second half. On the Grizzlies, KMAX Sports, Bright Media Network. Bright Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, back with you on the Halftime Show, brought to you by Los Reyes Mexican Restaurant. Check out the best Mexican happy hour in Cedar Park off of Bell Boulevard. Happy hour, EJ, as always, starts at 2. It's from 2 to 6. Get the best margaritas, best beer specials in town off of Bell Boulevard. Go to Los Reyes, Texas. Com. We also had one last chance to talk to Coach Shane Phil. He talked about the mood of the team, what's going on right now in their week of preparation, getting ready for this big week against Cedar Creek. Let's hear from Coach Shane Phil one more time. What's the mood of the team right now? Three in a row, doing well. Again, I know you, you talk to them a lot about not paying attention to the outside, the media, everybody hyping up Glenn now. Everybody's starting to realize what's going on here. Uh, what's just the overall mood of the team this week? You know, this week we had, a first of all, something that, I, as a coach, dread, especially as an old man um, <laughs> who's been around the block more times than I'd like to recount. But, um, you know, we had a weird schedule, routine change, and I hate, hate, hate routine changes. Um, you know, this week we had Monday and Tuesday. Uh, the kids had no school because of some professional development stuff here in the district. So we, we transitioned on Monday and Tuesday from my normal practice before school at 6 a.m. to practice after school. Uh, or what would be after school, and not only the normal 4.05 starting time, which is what we do on Wednesdays mm -hmm. normally, but because our uh, all of us were in our meetings, uh, our teacher meetings, until 4 o'clock, we basically had to have a 5 o'clock starting time, go 5 to 7. So total change in, in our practice routine. Um, you know, you don't, have them, you don't have them here at school. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you worry a little bit about, is everybody going to be able to be here? Um, things like that. So, having said that, they did a, you know, everybody was here, everybody was ready to go. Um, they took the, uh, the the schedule change uh, and just did a tremendous job of just picking up where where we feel like they should have and just coming ready for business, getting to work. And, and honestly, um, I thought last night, Tuesday night's practice, offensively speaking was one of the better, if not the best one we've had all year. Now, you know, that's great on Tuesday because that's the expectation. I mean, we gotta, we got to win every day. Um, and, you know, we, we are, every week is a little bit more uncharted territory for us. And um, we've just got to worry about handling what's in front of us right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't go out and win a Friday night football game on Tuesday. But you can't lose it. <laughs> I mean, you can't. You know, even if you have a great practice, it's probably it's not enough on Tuesday to uh, to win the game on Friday. There's still more that needs to be done. But if you come out and have uh, substandard practice, mm -hmm. that can be enough to tip the scales and uh, you know and over to the balance of losing the football game. So. Against that was Coach Shane Feld talking about this week's preparation and just talking about, uh, you know, what they need to do. That this is, Lamont Slade said it best last week. This is just results. They're putting this work every single day. They're there on Monday mornings. I've gone to a couple of those practices, DJ. It's rough getting up to see <laughs> Leander being up there at 6 a.m. And you when you pull up a set uh, Gabriel Parkway, you see that those lights from that stadium. And they're out there. They're working. Mm -hmm. I mean... They're working. They're in the weight room. They got a great weight room culture. The guys working hard in the off season. It's like this is this is a, a really great program. Not even a team because we're seeing a lot of stuff going on with their JV team and their and their and their freshman team. The yeah, JV team pulled up a win yesterday too against Cedar Creek. So they're playing well. This is a great program led by a great head coach, great man and coach Rob Shanefeld. And uh, again, this is just results. I mean, we talked we talked about it off the air a little bit, and we have throughout the course of the season. And what the great thing that we talk about is that outside of this coaching staff and outside of this roster, and maybe the athletic director, maybe the principal gets a hint of it, there is nobody outside of that school that thought, 
they would be having the type of season that they're having right now. And I mean, if you're just listening right now, you see all three and two. The two losses came against a powerhouse in Liberty Hill and a shortened game against McNeil that, I mean, we talked about it, that with the way that offense was rolling, we don't know how that game could have turned out had it finished. So they could very easily be 4-1 and one right now with their only loss coming to a powerhouse. And again, we talked about it again. I'd love to see them play one more time. Yeah, if you put Liberty Hill and Glenn together again, there's no telling what kind of game that would be. But as an athlete myself, I love what Lamont Slade said right there, is that this is just the results. And you, you're there at practice, and I, I can't speak for that. But what I've seen, for, for my personal sake, is that this team every single week just seems like they're playing with a little more energy and a like, little more refinement to how they're playing. No one's fooling around. No one's hanging out. No one's on their phone. Everybody's there working. They're working in stations. They're working with their position groups and their specialties. Everybody is working. It's just, it's a, re- and it's so synchronized the way practices run. They got was on the uh, scoreboard. There's five minutes. They do five minutes of this, five minutes of that, and they continue to rotate. Everybody's there. They're just working. You're seeing competition between the receivers. And it's funny because I've seen Sam Martin throw a couple of passes just on some routes in practice as well so yeah, everything we've seen they you know they kind of put it in play so uh cedar creek is going to receive the kickoff to start the third quarter and yeah, well, oh, no, glenn is going to receive it glenn mm-hmm. kicked off excuse me glenn kicked off to start so glenn's going to try to build off his lead we saw last uh minute field goal last second field goal from nada solace from 35 yards matches his season long to put the eagles on the board 21 to 3 we saw some changes. They took Houston out of the game. They brought Figueroa. They brought in Davion Clark. So, you know, Coach Edwards trying to mix it up, trying to find a spark for his team to get things going. Uh, this is a very important drive for the Grizzlies. You know, they've been in their locker room for about 30 minutes. You know, in high school, the halftime's a little bit longer. So this team can come out, have a nice drive to get going. Like I said, lock that door. That's going to be the mantra for this team. they got to be able to lock that door, and let's see if they can do so here. As Salas is getting ready to kick back, Henderson and Martin are back deep for the Grizzlies. Left to right on your radio. Kick is up and is in the air. Coming on is it's actually Dom Sullivan is going to return it. He's going to try to turn up field. He's not going to go anywhere. He's going to be tackled at the 27-yard line. So about a four-yard return for Dom Sullivan. And the Grizzlies will take over at their own 27-yard line with 11.53 left to go in the third quarter. Mason Selby, the junior running back, was on the tackle. He was just hanging along for the ride right there by Sullivan. He was finally able to bring him down after about two seconds of being draped over his back. So Drew McGuire in the first quarter, 10 for 15, 142 yards, as he also had a passing touchdown. Sam Martin had a passing touchdown to Lee Pollock as well. So first and 10 from the 27, <laughs> shotgun snap, give is to Slade, and he's met immediately, and I think that's, you know who. And that's actually Reggie Smith, I thought it was Collins. Reggie Smith is going to bring Slade back for a big loss as they are brought back to the 22-yard line. So a five-yard loss on the play for Slade. That'll bring up second and 15. And again, you're starting to see some energy on the field uh, that we can see from up here in the booth from the Cedar Creek defense. They believe that they're still in this game because Glenn led, did let them hang around. They did, were the last one to score right before the half. Got some momentum with that field goal by Salas. Second and 15 from their own 22. They need the 37 for a first down. McGuire rolling, looking to pass. Ball's broken up incomplete as it'll bring up third down so as you mentioned out see the crew team putting pressure on mcguire rolling him out the pocket i mean i was thinking about it during the break and i was hoping i wouldn't have to say it but this team won't, won't go away this team is playing too well on both sides of the football for them not to battle the entire rest of the way through so they brought in clay upton and ronderick stubblefield are in the game right now i'd like to see them you know if they can get some breathing room here on this drive go back to that three uh, running back set i mean, haven't seen Nichols at all either so Interesting to see what's going on with him. They fake to give. Stumblefield out in the flat. He's going to break a tackle, get outside of the 30-yard line. It's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. So an 11-yard pickup, fourth down and four. So it's manageable. And the way Charles has been punting today, might as well go for it. But they are, they're going to call out Charles to punt. Kate Edwards was on the tackle. The leading tackler on this Cedar Creek defense has averages 12 tackles a game. Also has two sacks and an interception to his name so far this year. 
So right now, Stubblefield, the leading receiver for the Grizzlies, four yards. No, uh, st uh, both of them. It's Henderson, three catches, 62 yards. Stubblefield, four catches, 55 yards. As Childs gets a much better punt off of this one as it's across midfield. It's going to take a Grizzly bounce, and it is going to be down by Sam Martin at the Cedar Creek 33-yard line. Yeah, I like what Coach Shanefield did. A 35-yard punt Yeah, I like Derek Childs. I like what he did it right there. I mean, two punts where your net average is four. It's not usually a recipe to be holding on to your job for much longer, and I say that with as much respect I have to Childs. But I like what Shanefield did right there, not giving up when he could easily go to somebody else, as we know that punter job has been up in the air for the last couple of weeks. So Childs pushes Cedar Creek at their own 32-yard, and they've struggled all night getting anything going on offense. As it looks like, is it going to be Houston? It is Houston still at quarterback. Two receipt two backs out there is Perales and Mojica. And the give is to Mojica. He's gonna bounce to the outside. They're gonna give him the thirty seven yard line. So a four yard pickup for Mojica. And that'll bring up second and six. That's what they gotta got to start doing. Gotta get things happening on first down. That flag came in late and it looked like it was in the pile. But that's something again that that still I'm scratching my head about that they didn't go to that Coach Edwards didn't go to in the first half. Mohica's been their bell cow. He's been the he's been the motor of this offense for the entire season. You come in less than three carries for with for an offense, and not giving yourself a best chance to win. You when you're not putting your playmakers in there to make a play. So a penalty against Cedar Creek. So that'll that'll take away that gain. For Mojica, it's going to repeat first down. They're going to personal, personal foul on the play. It's going to back them up. Now we're going to get to 15 yards because they're outside of the 25-yard line. So they are going to put the ball at the 22-yard line. So first and 25. Waiting to get the call in. Play clock down. That's 14 seconds and counting. 9.53 left to go in the third quarter. Grizzlies leading at 21-3. It's Figueroa in that quarterback. He's looking. He's throwing deep down the field. A little bit of contact. Noah Holmes with the interception at midfield. Noah Holmes picks the ball up at midfield, and the Grizzlies will take over on the turnover. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn on this one, but I said at the beginning of the broadcast, this might be the day that Noah Holmes gets what that <laughs> pick that's eluded him for the entire season. We know how good of a ball hog he was. We talked about him at the halftime show. Noah Holmes coming in, making a play when he needs to. The ball hawk in the middle. Great play right there by Noah Holmes. Absolutely. I thought Townsley got away with a little bit of contact as Livingston was trying to come across the field, but nonetheless, Holmes is there for the interception. Grizzlies offense back on the field at the 50-yard line. 9.43 left to go in the third quarter. Fake the handoff is Hatter. He's going to get the ball inside the 45. He's down at the 41-yard line, so a quick nine-yard slant to Nate Hatter. Great to get him involved. Second catch of the game. Yeah, you start to see the rhythm and the chemistry going on between McGuire and his receivers. Hatter right there, a timing pattern. That was relied so much on those two guys being on the same page. Good timing right there. Second and one from the 41-yard line. Got two running backs. The give is to Upton. Going to push across, dancing across the 40, and he's going to push his way to the 38-yard line. A nice pickup for first down by Clay Upton, and the ball's at the 38-yard line of Cedar Creek territory. We weren't able to get an update on Julian Morris at the halftime break, but we haven't seen him in any packages yet, so my assumption is that he is done for the day, and we'll try to get you an update next week on what his status is for the biggest game of the year. Henderson out to the right, Martin out to the left, Stumblefield is in motion, they give to him, he's going to cut across the 40, break a tackle, get inside the 35, they'll mark him down at the 35 yard line, so a 3 yard pickup on the end around by Ronderick Stubblefield. And what I'm noticing from Stubblefield is that one thing that I picked up from watching him over the last couple of weeks, he's hard to tackle, yeah. I mean, he's a shifty guy, he can get in between guys, he can make some people miss, and he's that's why he's that little burst of energy, like when you see the offense not going how they want to. Usually they, that's when they throw in Rondrick Stubblefield to try to create a spark for the offense. And you see Nichols. So Nichols is healthy. He's out on the bench kind of shaking his legs ready to go. As he hits Nate Hatter on the outside, breaks a tackle, and he's out of bounds. But they are going to give him the first down as Nate Hatter gets to the 25-yard line, a 10-yard pickup to the tight end. 
and a tight end right here showing off how good of hands he really does have. Oh, that's what I've always noticed about him. He always uses his hand. Never, you'll never see Nate Hatter try to cushion a pass with his chest and then wrap it up. He's always has really good hands for the tight end, and that is key. Gone to Nate Hatter twice on this drive. Two catches, 19 yards on the drive. He also had a no, no uh, gain on the last play. Here's Stumblefield to the outside, across the 20, inside the 15, to the 10, to the 5. That's a touchdown. Ronderick Stumblefield is in the end zone with a 25-yard score, and the Grizzlies lead it 27-3. to three. Another flag down. They're not letting my guy get a touchdown. This is the second time he gets in the end zone to bring it back for a penalty. Let's see what's on first. Holding on Glenn. So the hole was open for a reason. Stumblefield got to bring his way back. Man, if you're Stumblefield, <laughs> what do I got to do to get a touchdown? He's scoring twice. I mean, we've seen Stubblefield. He's breaking a couple of big runs, and he's found his way in the end zone. The only problem is none of them have shown up on the scoreboard. 8.06 left to go in the third quarter here at Memorial Stadium in Bastrop, where the Grizzlies are currently leading the Cedar Creek Eagles 21-3. to so Move the ball back first and 13. An eight-yard penalty. Give is to Upton, breaks the tackle, and he is brought down at the 31-yard line. Excuse me, the 26-yard line, so a two-yard pickup for Clay Upton. It'll bring up second down and 13. Five carries, 19 yards for Clay Upton. That's what I'm liking about Upton, is that Upton is kind of like a mid blend of everybody. He ha he has a little shift to him, but he can also break a couple of tackles. McGuire, second and nine from... The Eagles 26 yard line, looking to pass, he throws, he hits Hatter inside the 20, inside the 15, and he pushes his way for a first down, a little extra contact at the end, but a big strong tight end coming through again for the Grizzlies. It seems like he's the safety blanket for Drew McGuire whenever McGuire needs to go. I mean, you see tight ends in the NFL like the, the Kelseys and the Gronkowskis of the world. Whenever somebody gets flushed out of the pocket, you immediately look for your tight end. That's what McGuire has with Hatter, reliable target that can shake off. He's too big for the safeties and he's too fast for the cornerbacks. Fourth catch of the game for Hatter as the give is to Stubblefield and this time he gets down to the one yard line. <laughs> Roderick Stubblefield down on a 13 yard pickup. He's inside the one. They got to get him the ball uh, here no, now. That's exactly what I was about to say. I hope that after he's gotten two touchdowns called back and one where he's just down at the one yard line that Coach Coach Rob Shanefield would try to get Roger again there for a touchdown. First and goal from the one yard line. 7.03 and counting for the Grizzlies. They're threatening for more. They got a 21 to 3 lead on the road at Cedar Creek. Trips backs. Give is to Upton. Pushing his way and he's in the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. Clay Upton with a one yard touchdown. The Grizzlies lead it 27 to 3. I mean no doubt about that right there. There's great blocking on the left side of the line by the offensive line that we talk about so much and it starts with left tackle Trent Brown, Rudy Martinez, Jacob Trim, Nick Maddox and Slade Josich both all of them doing their job getting their key blocks making some plays down the field in the red zone good blocking up front Martin puts the hole down Soto kicks it right through for the extra point Soto 4 for 4 on the day Grizzlies lead it 28 to 3 you're listening to Grizzlies football the K-Max Sports Network. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on KMAXSports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. This is head football coach Rob Shanefeld, and you're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAX Sports Vibe Media Network. Another Grizzlies touchdown as the Grizzlies lead it 28 to 3. 647 left to go in the third quarter. Grizzlies looking to win their fourth game in a row, third district game in a row, as Pedro Soto is getting ready to kick off from his own 40-yard line. Clay Upton with his second touchdown of the game, a one-yard score. After Summerfield took it all the way down to the one, 
Clay Upton, five carries, 20 yards, two touchdowns. That's good. Those are good fantasy points, too. That's, <laughs> that's about 14 and a half points. The kick is fielded at the 20 yard line. It's dropped. It's muffed. He's trying to get possession, and he does. Looks like that might be Figueroa on that recovery. Let's see who it is that gets up. And again, these, these Cedar Creek Eagles, they've had some trouble on the kickoffs trying to bring it in. As it was Ty Pruitt on the recovery, and he's limping off, but he's going to stay in the huddle. Yeah, they're second leading receivers. That's the last thing you want to see if you're Cedar Creek. So Figueroa is in the game at quarterback. They've been doing a lot of swapping with Houston out. It looks like Figueroa is going to be the guy to go in the under center. Much smaller quarterback than Hunter Houston. 6.44 left to go in the third. The give, Perales fighting his way. He's got nowhere to go as he's pushed back and loses a yard on the play. Second and 11 for the Eagles. Yeah, this defense obviously not letting up. I mean, usually you see towards the end of the game a defense starting to get tired or start to go through the motions. But it all goes back to that attitude that you say they bring into practice every day, that they're playing every game like it could be the best play of the game. Second and 11 from the Eagles' 20-yard line. They need the Grizzly 31. F they need the Eagle 31 for first down. Excuse me. Back to pass. Perales again pushing, trying to fight his way. Nothing but Grizzlies. As uh, so they're going to give him 20, the 24-yard line on forward progress. And now flag's going to come in late. It looks like Lee Pollock or Skyler Lee might have gotten a late hit as they push the player to the ground. And that was Skyler Lee that was on the tackle for the Grizzlies. So we'll try to see who it is on. They turn off the audio, so we can't hear who the number is. And it was on the defense. It was a face mask that was going to be 15 yards going the other way for Cedar Creek. So Perales picks up three on the play, and then we tack on another 15. So the ball's going to be put now at the Cedar Creek 39-yard line. They'll have first and 10, 5.55 and counting left to go in the third quarter. Grizzlies lead at 28-3. to three. Cedar Creek, knowing they're running out of time in this game, they're trying to get something going fast offensively. Shotgun snap, Figueroa gives to Mojica. He's bouncing around. He's got nowhere to go, and Jamal Johnson brings him down, but they'll give him forward progress at the 40, so a gain of one yard left. But Jamal Johnson dropped him at the 36. I really like the way Jamal Johnson has come out here in the middle half of the season. I mean, we, we talk, we'll always talk about the Creels and the Lee Polacks but, and the Chase Dowdens. But Jamal Johnson has really come on and held his own in that linebacking core. Absolutely. Second and nine for the Eagles. They need the Grizzly. Excuse me. They need their own 49 for a first down. Figueroa. He's back to throw. He's rolling out to his right. Looking down the field. He's got nothing. He's going to fake it. Take off for himself. And he's going to be met at the 45-yard line by Petey Cervantes. So a five-yard pickup. That'll bring up third and manageable for the Eagles. Third down four. And what we always talk about on other teams is that you usually can pick out the deepest position. Usually, like, at, I'll come back to this point after this big third down right here. They're changing the play at the line of scrimmage as Figueroa is staring at his bench to get the audible. Two runners in the backfield. Perales to the left of Figueroa, Mojica to the right. Pruitt and Livingston out left. Give is to Perales, uh, Figueroa, excuse me. He's going to take it himself. He's going to get across midfield and into Grizzly territory to the 46 yard line. So a nine yard pickup for Figueroa. It seems like Figueroa is in that pack, that kind of like explosive package where it seems like he does have a good arm. He showed that right before the half, but he can also make some plays with his legs. I mean, he plays safety. He's a good runner. So we'll change the play again. 3.59 left to go in the third and counting. Figueroa trying to provide a spark for the Cedar Creek offense. They're in Grizzly territory. Give Perales. To about the 44-yard line they're going to give him. So three-yard pickup for Perales. And he's starting to have some gains now, even though eight carries, ten yards. But he's got six on his last two. 
I mean, I'm still, I, I don't want to second guess anything by either coaching stats, but again, Mojica has been your guy on the ground all season, over 300 yards, I mean, averaging about 90 yards again, so, so the equivalent of what Julian Morris does, and we haven't seen a lot of him. Second and seven from the Grizzly 44, they need the Grizzly 37 for a first down. Clock continuing to run, it's at 311 and counting. Nine seconds on the play clock. It's high snap, the give, Perales. Pushing the pile. He might have a first down. They're going to mark him down at the 42. Excuse me, the 37. It looks like they are going to give him the first down. So seven yard pickup for Perales. Nine carries, 17 yards on the day for him. So you can live with that if you're Coach Shanefield. First and 10 from the Grizzly 37. Trying to see if we see Hunter Houston anywhere and on the bench, and I don't see him at all. Unless he's one of those players that doesn't have his uh, equipment on sitting on the bench. A fumble snap, Figueroa, and he's met by Jamal Johnson again. Yeah, Jamal Johnson in on the tackle as a fumble snap by Figueroa. I mean, I'll talk about it again that. This team, the linebacking corps, is so deep. I mean, you get down to Jamal Johnson. There's Manuel De Los Santos. He's a backup offensive lineman. He's in there making plays as well. Second and 15 to go for the Eagles. Two minutes and counting left to go in the third quarter. As Figueroa trying to get on the same page with his offensive line. Snap, fakes the give. Back to pass. He's going to take off and run. And he's brought down by number 43 on the defense. That's Ryan Crane in on the tackle. Actually, Hester in on the tackle, excuse me. The senior defensive lineman for the Grizzlies, who's been so good anchoring the line along with uh, Francis Daiku and Guyton for the majority of the season. 122 left to go in the third quarter. Third and ten for Cedar Creek. Again, this offense is just not really clicking right now. Well, he's not their main quarterback, so I'm not sure he knows the playbook that well. I mean, they, they, it's just a lot of change and a lot of audibles based on what the Grizzlies are showing. As Figueroa is back to snap, he fakes it, throws deep in the end zone, and Noah Holmes is in there for the interception, his second of the game, and he's out with blockers on the return. He's at the 30, at the 40, at midfield, pushing his way, and he's going to be brought down inside of the Cedar Creek territory, and he's down at the 37-yard line, an interception and a big return for Noah Holmes, his second of the game. Noah Holmes camped under that like it was a kickoff return. Noah Holmes keeping his eyes on the quarterback the entire time. He read his eyes, came back to the far side, came back to the near side of the field, made the play, kept, made sure he kept his feet in bounds, and doing what not a lot of safeties would do in that situation, probably going out of bounds, celebrating your interception. No, he cut up field, he turned around, turned into a big gain on the on the other side and making it very easy for this offense to try to get going here in the third quarter. Grizzlies take over at the Cedar Creek 37 yard line. 45 seconds left to go. The give bounce to the outside. Lamont Slade gets across the 30. Inside the 25. Push down and he's brought down at the 22 yard line. So a 15 yard pickup for Lamont Slade. And I don't know how but Alfred Collins made that tackle and he was playing nose guard at that point. I mean he as soon as Slade caught that ball he raced him to the spot near the 23 yard line and just nicked him enough really amazing display of athleticism right there by Alfred Collins hey if you're a UT fan by the way shout out to uh, Tom Herman and UT knocking off Oklahoma they got a nice player coming to them next year 17 seconds left to go McGuire back to pass he's looking for the end zone he's got Sam Martin for a touchdown a 22 yard touchdown McGuire to Sam Martin Grizzlies lead it 34 to 3 11 seconds left to go in the third quarter beautiful pass right there by McGuire and Martin did a good job on that post route he was lined up in the slot and made the break just at the perfect time McGuire hit him perfectly another big play by that tandem 34-3 Grizzlies only 10 seconds left to go this team is putting on a show here in Bastrop Martin after the touchdown he's got to get the kick down Soto puts it up and it is good no good excuse me wow I missed wide to the right so no good as Soto misses his first extra point of the game and the Grizzlies will lead it 30 
four to three. You're listening to Grizzlies football on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help. Adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, and we all have at least one of those, you are needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive, helping people help pets. This is the KMAX Sports Network. Eleven seconds left to go in the third quarter. Alan Spader, EJ Sanchez, Randy Fry with you on the KMAX Sports Fight Media Network. Grizzlies in control of this one. 34 to 3. We're at Bastrop Memorial Stadium in Cedar Creek. As Pedro Soto, after missing the extra point, is getting ready to kick off. So they're going to have put Livingston, I think, is that back there on the return as it is up. And Livingston catches it at his 14-yard line, gets across the 20, breaks the tackle, and he's brought down at the 21-yard line. So about an 8-yard pickup for Livingston. You see Coach Isaac right there pulling out all the stops right now, putting his best receiver, his most explosive player, out on special teams to try to do something. I mean... A little more. I was expecting a little more sense of urgency from the Cedar Creek side. I mean, obviously you're not in the fourth quarter, quarter yet, so you're not exactly in four-down territory, and you're not exactly racing the clock. But you're looking for three scores against a team that's only giving you one when you had a short field to work with, and then again, it was still only a long field goal. Absolutely. So seven seconds left to go in the third quarter. This might be the final play of the third. The give is to Perales, and he is brought down initially by I'm trying to get the player that Johnson again Johnson's having himself a night and that's also Matthew Hester with him so that'll be the last play of the third quarter we're going to take another break Grizzlies 34 to 3 in this one we'll be back on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network the KMAX Sports Camp was so hot this summer we're going to offer it again this coming December. That's right, three KMAX Sports campers not only learned about sports broadcasting, but they're getting it done on the KMAX Sports Network as you hear this. You want your young one to learn, get hands-on experience, and possibly get involved? Middle schoolers, high schoolers, and adults are welcome. We'll hold three sessions in December, including two over Christmas break. Call us for more information at 512-338-1111, extension 100. That's 512-338-1111, extension 100. The KMAX sports staff with over 100 years of combined broadcast experience will give each camper personalized guidance on getting into and advancing a career in sports broadcasting. Campers will be provided water, camp t-shirt, and a sample of their work. And just like high school sophomores Jace Andrews, Blake Herrera, and EJ Sanchez, the best campers may get an opportunity to intern and possibly work with KMAX Sports. Call us for information, 512-338-1111, extension 100, or email us, info at kmaxsports.com. The KMAX Sports Camp, the best way to get in the game. This is the KMAX Sports Network. All right, so we're posi- we are changing field positions as the fourth quarter is underway. Ashton Figueroa is still at quarterback for the Grizzlies. And finally, a big run as it looks like that's Perales. He's going to get across the 35-yard line, down at the 36-yard line. So a 16-yard pickup for Perales. It looks like that one. That was Mojica. That was Mojica. You're right. Excuse me. Mojica on the 16-yard pickup. That's his fourth carry of the game. He's got 21 yards. So their big play guy on the ground is finally starting to get some action. Might be a little little too late, though, as there's 11.40 and counting left to go. Grizzlies are up by 31. Figueroa, hands off. And I think that is a Perales. Tough to see. Those black jerseys make it really tough. That is Perales on the carry. So I'm not sure. What are they going to give him a yard on the play? So it looks like they're giving him about two yards. Right? Yeah, they rounded up on the yard and a half gain, so they'll give him two. 11 0 8 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Third down and eight. Cedar Creek from their own 39. They need the Grizzly 47 for a first down. Hand off again. This time. It's Mojica again as he's across midfield and he gets down to the Grizzly 46-yard line. 
So a 15-yard pickup from Mojica. He's getting going, like you said. Where was this earlier in the game? I mean, that's the same thing I thought. I mean, I thought Mojica was going to be a focal point earlier in the game, and this starting him in with 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter is just a little confusing. So changing the play at the line of scrimmage is Figueroa. Ty Pruitt out to the left, Livingston out to the right. Give. Breaks the tackle. Across the 40, inside the 35, down at the 33-yard line. And that is Mojica again. <laughs> They're actually going to mark him down at the 34-yard line. So a 12-yard pickup for Mojica. That tackle was made by Brian Creel. So Mojica, 16 yards, 15 yards, now 13 yards. He's starting to heat up. 10.09 and counting left to go, fourth quarter. Handoff. Mojica again, this run right up the gut. And he is tripped up by number two. That's Gabe Holden on the Gabe Bolden on the stop. It looks like an official was taken around taken down right around the 26 yard line. He's needing help getting up. So ball is now at the 23 yard line. So another big pickup and a first down. For the Eagles, so about 11-yard pickup for Mojica. Now he's got seven carries for 60 yards. He's got four straight carries of 10-plus yards. This defensive front is going to try to focus hard on these next few plays of trying to plug their gaps and not let them run free in between the tackles. 9.52 and counting left to go. Fourth quarter, first and 10 for the Eagles. Their most promising drive so far as the ball's at the Grizzly 23-yard line. And fumble snap, Figueroa. And he is pushed back to the 25-yard line. So he fumbled the snap. And he picks it back up. And the ball's pushed back to the 25-yard line. So a two-yard loss on the play. That'll bring up second down and 12. Creel found his way back in the backfield again on that last play. About a second late, second early, he might have had a chance to come up with that loose ball. Second and 11. But it's really second and 12, I think, from here. Ball is on the 25-yard line. First down is at the 13. So second down and 12. 9.07 left to go. Figueroa back to pass. Hits a slant. It's almost picked off as the ball was tipped by P. Cervantes, who's having himself a great game tonight. Again, you expect it when we have heard their names. We've heard the Brian Chris. We've heard the Lee Pollock, uh, the new quarterback phenom in Leander, but... Jamal Johnson and P.D. Cervantes having some whale of some football games that they're having by themselves along with Brian Creel and Lee Pollock. Absolutely. So clock stops with nine minutes left to go. Third down and 11 coming up for Cedar Creek. Ball's at the 25-yard line of Glenn. They need the Glenn 13 and a half for first down. And that's Lee Pollock, the linebacker, and not the receiver. <laughs> Figueroa back to pass. He's waiting. He throws deep for the end zone. And Noah Holmes tips it out of deflection. What a play by the safety. Noah Holmes again reading his eyes all the way downfield and circles all the way back around near the near side. Made a double coverage, and he is really excited about that. Throwing his hands across, saying there's no fly here. That was a great pass by Figueroa, but an even better defensive play by Holmes to tip it away at the last second. So fourth down. Showing off 12. that vertical jump right there. At that basketball, I tell you, he's that basketball player, so still got a little, a little hops. <laughs> a little bit left. 8.53 left to go, fourth down and 12. Cedar Creek needs the Glen 13 for a first down. Figueroa back to pass. He rolls out to the right. He lost one in the end zone. And on Maria, does he have the interception? They're going to say no, he doesn't. As the ball hit the floor, Isaac Armijo. Almost had the interception, but when he dove, he actually landed on the ball. That was the first thing to hit the ground. So, incomplete. Grizzlies will take over on downs at their own 25-yard line. Figueroa is limping on the field, and he can't go off to the bench because he has to play safety in the secondary for them coming up. And that's something that Cedar Creek doesn't want to see because they already lost their starting quarterback for the day, Hunter Houston. We haven't even seen. We can't even see him on the bench unless he's already taken. His jersey off. off yeah. So Figueroa got a good lick from Brian Creel at the tail end of that play. Creel being physical, as he always is, one of the anchors on that defense. So Grizzlies are actually going to start to bring out some of their reserved offensive linemen. We're going to 
to see how they handle all this. But we got number 72, Nate Cardenas in the game. Uh, Arden Hinojos is in there. Ariton Hinojos is going to check in at center. So 75, Alfredo Madero. So again, this is what Coach Shanefield does. Game's kind of out of hand at this point. 8.45 left to go. They're up 31 points. You know, let some of the younger guys play. Give. This is the first time we're going to see Shamir Nichols. Is he's going to break a tackle? That's Stumblefield, excuse me. I thought it was Nichols. <laughs> as he's going to get all the way to the 45 yard line. So, 25 yard pickup for Ronderick Stubblefield. And during the commercial break, we were alluding that we've made every, we've called every single thing. We've called the Holmes interceptions and we've called yeah, everything else that we've seen on the offensive side of the ball. The only thing that we haven't checked yet is a Rondrick Stubblefield touchdown. He's out. Of the game right now, it's Upton and Slade as the running backs. Give us to Slade. He's going to bounce outside upfield. He's going to get across midfield, and he's going to be in Cedar Creek, Cedar Creek territory as he's down at the 46-yard line. So a nine-yard pickup for Slade to bring out second down and one. Brought down by Damian Perez, the sophomore defensive back, who has had a couple of tackles, one of the leading tacklers tonight on this defense for Cedar Creek that hasn't really played that bad of a game looking back on it, but just Glenn has benefited benefited from good field position. 8-11 as Slade was pushed out of bounds, so the clock stopped. Second and one from the Eagles' 46-yard line. So they need the 45 for the first down as it is Upton and Slade in the backfield. Give is to Upton. He's going to take it outside. Bounce. He's got the first down. They'll give him forward progress at the Eagles 44-yard line. So a two-yard pickup and a first down for Clay Upton. Josh Garza was the one that disposed of him right there near the 36-yard line. 8.03 left to go with the Grizzlies currently leading the Eagles 34-3. Well, Kobe Sorellen in the game. Nate Hatter. Sam Martin. As it is still Upton and Slade in the backfield. Ten seconds left to go on the play clock. Grizzlies got to hurry up. Seven seconds left to go. First and ten from the Cedar Creek 44. Give. Slade. Bounces to the outside. Cross the 45. To the 40. 35. Pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. So a 12-yard pickup for Lamont Slade. And something I want to remind everybody that listening is that they're producing this much offense on the ground without their bruiser, without their main guy, the leader in rushing yards per game, Julian Morris, who went down in the second quarter. And this is also with some of these uh, second team offensive linemen. Eric Sanchez was leading the way on that, on that block as well. Give. Stumblefield. Cross to 30. He is down at the 26-yard line, so a six-yard pickup for Ronderick Subblefield. Second down and four for the Grizzlies. Good wrap-up tackle right there by Edwards, who we haven't said his name a lot. I was expecting to see him being in the backfield all day, being a menace, being a thorn in Drew McGuire's side, maybe come up with a sack. But we haven't been able to see him, him or Reggie Smith, and that's just a testament to how well his offense is playing on the ground and how fast Drew McGuire is getting rid of the ball in the pocket. Absolutely. So clock continuing to run. 6.50 left to go in the game. Grizzlies trying to put a cherry on top in this one. McGuire gives. And that's Slade. He's going to earn his way to the 30, 26 yard line, excuse me. So a two yard pickup, looks like. So now we're trying to see the little bit of the Lamont Slade show late in this game. Absolutely. 12 carries, 75 yards on the game. For Lamont Slade, third down and four for the Grizzlies. Still putting together a nice evening. I mean, it's not the 200-yard four-touchdown game that he had against Elgin that it seemed like. But again, putting together a nice afternoon, trying to be the leader of this running backs course without Julian Morris. Give. Upton. Cross to 30. Retains his lanes. Goes across. He's inside the 25-yard line. They will mark him down at the 21-yard line, so a five-yard pickup and a first down for the Grizzlies. That was a good run right there by Clay Upton, keeping his vision open. That's so important for a running back. Whenever you see that your first hole didn't open up, shifting to the other side of the field to see if something did open up. And on that one, it did, and he was able to spring loose for an extra five yards. 
Sam Martin still in the game. Receiver out to the left. It'll be Upton. And Slade in the backfield. Left to right on your radio. Slade is to McGuire's right. Upton is to his left. Shotgun formation. Snap. Upton. Inside. Trying to find his way. He's got nowhere to go. And forward progress has him down at the 16. The 21, excuse me. <laughs> What's funny about that play? It no seemed gain like, on the play. It seemed like there's 11 guys on the field. Ten of them were on that tackle, and the only one that wasn't was Collins. Collins was sitting back a little bit, <laughs> trying to enjoy the show a little bit. He's done enough. He has a good number of tackles today and disrupted a lot in the running game. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, the Grizzlies still put up 34 points. He's only one guy, unfortunately. And that's what Noah Holmes said. We edited the interview a little bit. But he said, you know, basketball, one guy can still show in football. It's all about the team philosophy, team mentality. And that's what this Glenn team does is they're cruising their way to their fourth win of the season. Stumblefield bounces the outside, breaks the tackle, can't get past Collins as he's going to lose a yard or two on the play. Third down. Yeah, Collins wraps him up again. If it does get to fourth down, if the Grizzlies aren't able to pick it up, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Shane Field plays it. If he's going to go with Soto for the long, we haven't seen Soto be capable of. It seemed like it would be a 42-yard field goal right now, or he'll see if he'll keep the offense out there with 34 to three. Third down and 12, 414 and counting left to go. Uh, Stumblefield is in the game. 405 and counting. Shotgun snap. McGuire fakes the handoff. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw it out of bounds, out of play. It'll bring up fourth down. That was good coverage down the field by that Cedar Creek secondary, a secondary that has come up with a couple of interceptions on the year. None tonight, fortunately. Drew McGuire always, usually around this side of the field, is usually where he's had his other two interceptions. But on the flip side of it, the two interceptions for Houston and Figueroa, Houston had two coming into the game. Holmes has two today. So Holmes playing a great game, manning the back end of that secondary. 3.57 left to go. They're going to go for it on fourth and 12 as McGuire is going to be throwing on this play. He might run it. Give. Stumblefield. Can't break a tackle as he's brought down by Jacob Turner. That's Edwards. So Edwards on the tackle. They'll take over on downs. 3.51 left to go in the fourth quarter. Grizzlies lead at 34-3. Next week we have our homecoming game. And what I think is the game of the week. The game. <laughs> uh, that should be the K-View game of the week. We got to call for the K-View. Get that game on TV or something, buddy. You have the East View versus Glenn for the division lead. Got two great quarterbacks. Two great offenses. It's going to be a shootout at Bible Stadium in Cedar Park next week. Eagles take over and first run of the drive goes nowhere as they get back to the original line of scrimmage as that's Perales. No gain on the play. Tackle made for Glenn right there by number 41 Z Zion Bapti Baptist. Baptiste, yeah. Baptiste. So, again, getting a couple of second stringers in there, getting them some playing time because you never know when you're going to need them late in the season. I mean, you never know when you're going to need to use Dominic Sul Sullivan or Cody Bagwell. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. A handoff is to Mojica. He's going to bring it to the outside, switch hands, and he is out of bounds at the 47-yard line. So a 19-yard pickup from Mojica. He is at 79 yards in this one. One game did go final in District 13. Brenna, the Brenham Cubs have put away the Marble Falls Mustangs 41-21. to And Eastview leads Bastrop 30-19. to Bastrop putting up a lot better of a fight than most people thought they would. 30-19, a home game for the Eastview Patriots. Again, Patriots, Grizzlies next week. So i got to finish off this one. 3.08 to go. Hand off to Perales. He's wide open as he is going to get across the 35-yard line, down at the 33. So a 20-yard pickup for Perales as he's finally starting to get going. Alexander Townsley was on the tackle. So him, him and Holmes. Townsley and Holmes, have been, we're going to have to try to find a name for that secondary because they're playing really well on the back end.
244 and counting. 243 now. First down and 10 from the Grizzly 33. Mojica takes it. Looking for a hole. Townsley is there. So is number 31, Dwayne King, in on the tackle. So a pickup of. What are they going to give it? They, are they going to give it the first down? No. Uh, six yard pickup on the play. The defense continuing to play well, trying not to have any sort of stain on this really well played game that they have. Second down and four. Ball is at the Grizzly 22. They need the Grizzly 18 for a first down. Mojica pushing. And what a tackle there by Skyler Lee as he laid him down immediately at the 31 yard line. 21 yard line, excuse me. Yeah, if you have Lee and Daiku going at the same time, that's a tough meet of the defensive line for the Grizzlies if they can continue that for the rest of the season. Third down and three. Figueroa gives. He's going to take it himself. He's going to run outside. He's inside the 20-yard line. He's going to be brought down at the 8-yard line. So a 13-yard pickup as Figueroa decided to do it for himself. Uh, it is now first and goal with 126 you left can, to go in the game. You can, tell counting. That, you can tell that Figueroa is nicked up a little bit. Every single time he comes up from off the turf, he's limping a little bit, running around. Again, every single play, we see him learning, looking back to the sideline. I mean, Figueroa was the starting safety, but obviously the backup quarterback, he's in there right now for Houston. First and goal from the seven for Cedar Creek. They're trying to get him in the end zone for the first time today. Less than a minute remains. Clock continuing to run. Shotgun snap, Figueroa. He's looking to throw. He's looking to run. And he, he's going to get dropped for a loss. On the play. It's actually Mojica on the carry. He's going to lose a couple yards on that play. So he loses four yards on the play is Mojica. Defense not giving up. 34 seconds and counting. Trying to keep this streak of no touchdowns allowed. And last week the only touchdown was scored was on a pick six. And then the defense special teams came up and blocked that extra point. So they have not allowed a touchdown in almost two games. As Figueroa is back to pass. He's going to take off. And he's looking to run. He's got room. And he's going to get in the end zone for a touchdown. So Ashton Figueroa scampers for an 11-yard touchdown. 34-9 is the score with 11 seconds left to go in this one. Obviously, if you're the defense, you don't like it. But... I mean, barring anything crazy happening, the last eight quarters only giving up ten points, a little over a point a quarter. I mean, if, you're, if you told Coach Shanefield at the beginning of the season you're going to have a stretch like that, he definitely would have taken it. Absolutely. So the first touchdown that they've allowed since the fourth quarter at Elgin two weeks ago. Salas kicks is up, and it is good. So 34-10 to 10 is the score. 11 seconds left to go in this one. Grizzlies will improve their record now to 4-2. and two. They've won four games in a row. They're going to be tied with Eastview for the lead. Both teams will be 3-0 and oh as we go into district play next week. Well, I, uh, Brenham, from the stats that I'm looking at right now, Brenham was able to take down Eastview. But Eastview oh, they did beat Eastview. I thought you said Bastrop was playing Eastview. Bastrop is playing Eastview right now. But earlier in the season, it looks like Brenham was able to take down Eastview, and that was in week Six, I believe, and yeah, Brenham was able to edge Eastview 35 to 34, but Eastview leading in basically every single offensive category so far this year. So far this year, oh, it's Bastrop that's undefeated. You're right, Bastrop is undefeated there, and they're about to lose now too. Yeah, so I guess I was listening wrong, or I had a lot going <laughs> on. You did mention that you said that they would have they would be outright first place if they win this game. So they will be going into this. They will be going into next week outright first place. But you always want to win those tiebreakers. Those ties, tiebreakers will come back to bite you at the end of the season if you weren't able to beat the good ones. Everybody knows that you can beat the bottom of the barrel. But if it's if you could beat those top tier teams, that's going to decide where your seating is. Because when it comes to the playoffs, especially in the high school football here in Texas, being the number one seed helps you out so much because you play the fourth seed of the opposing district that you're lined up with. Salas. Set the pooch kick. Townsley is going to catch it. And he is going to fair catch it at his own 34-yard line. So no clock goes off there. So it's still going to be 11 seconds. So 
see if they can just kneel it in victory formation and get this victory, get out of here and get ready for Eastview next week. So, again, Glenn will be in sole possession of first place in District 13, 5A Division 2 football, Region 4. All that information <laughs> if you're taking notes at home. 11 seconds left to go, and you got to think this is a big win for Coach Shanefield with the team that they're competing with for playoff positioning. Absolutely. So Drew McGuire kneels it, and the Glen Grizzlies come to Bastrop and pick up a convincing win as they take over first place of the district as they win this one 34-10. to 10. Offense was unbelievable. Defense was just as good. Special teams, everybody had a part in this one. Great games by Petey Cervantes, Noah Holmes with two interceptions, Clay Upton with two touchdowns, Sam Martin threw a touchdown to Lee Pollock. Everything that you could have had in this game that could have went right for the Grizzlies went right. This is a great win, and as I mentioned earlier, they get better every week, and there's a big game coming up against Eastview next Friday, homecoming at Bible Stadium in Leander. If you're listening, Please drive out to Leander Cedar Park next week. Show up to the game. Show support for your Grizzlies because it's going to be a good one. Uh, it will be a good one. We'll try to see how Eastview holds up because they are holding on to a five-point lead with 120 left to go in the fourth quarter against Bastrop. So those two teams are going to have to duke it out with them the rest of the way. But again, as you already mentioned, a huge game. If you can, come out to Bible Stadium. It's the homecoming game for Glenn and if you can't we'll be here on the KMAX Sports of Vibe Media Network 30 minute pregame show prior to game time hopefully we'll have interviews with Coach Shanefield and a couple of the players we'll talk about we'll recap tonight's win and we'll preview the game next week it's going to be a shootout between the Eastview Patriots and the Glenn Grizzlies absolutely so again Glenn comes to Bastrop they pick up a big win another road win so in their two road games EJ in the district they put up 62 and now 34 points so 96 points when this team goes on the road in the district they are averaging 48 points a game on the road in district play 3-0 in the district looking for a big one next week pregame show at 7 o'clock Friday October 19th Bible Stadium make sure to check us out uh, I, I got nothing left I got it. it's all out there uh, any last words, EJ? I mean, this team played great. Again, we see them improve every single time. They're giving some thanks over there to the Glenn faithful. We'll try to get you an update on Julian Morris next week. Obviously, our thoughts and prayers are with um, the player that went down for Cedar Creek. We'll try to get you an update on them. We'll ask our Cedar Creek came out, guys, if there's anything that's to be updated on that. But, again, great win for Glenn. Come out next week. Biggest game of the season. It's going to be a fun one. We don't want you guys to miss it. We'll be here on the KMAX Sports Network. All right, for everybody involved with the broadcast, uh, Merle Bertrand, Chuck Licata, Randy Fry, Suna Venkat, EJ Sanchez, and myself, Alex Peta, Grizzlies win 34-10. We'll see you next week on the KMAX Sports Vite Media Network.